Message is being broadcast by the Department of Defense of the Republic. At 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, multiple unidentified objects were confirmed to have entered Earth's atmosphere. Discovery Houston, 20 seconds to LOS Tetris. The first message that comes to you is you are a divine being. You matter. You count. You come from realms of unimaginable power and life, and you will return to those realms. The vast stretches of the unknown and the unanswered and the unfinished still far outstrip our collective comprehension. Broadcasting from Forest Tower Studios, all the way from the Deep South. Now, here is your host, Joe Rubin. Broadcasting from a shack on a hill in the Mossy Creek bottoms of Cane Creek, Arkansas, this is Lighting the Void, and I'm your host, Joe Rubin. Welcome back. I hope you guys had a fantastic weekend. It is Monday night, December the 2nd, on into the 3rd, and tonight... We're going to have our first-time guest, Jason Layton, will be joining us from jlayton.com. Also, thesoulsdream.com and themastersoctave.org. We're going to be looking into exploration of consciousness big time on this show. So this story is pretty interesting. Jason's story is very interesting. We're going to let him tell it just here in a moment. This show is brought to you by getthetea.com. Man, i got to tell you, man, right now is no better time to go get yourself some life change tea. Uh, the winter pack is not up on the website anymore. I still want to congratulate uh, to congrats Jamie Golden for winning that uh, winter pack, which gets you a pack of life change tea. They won that. She won the Coral Sea and the Allison Advance. Uh, also, uh, AncientLifeOil.com, the best CBD oil on the planet, and the one and only Metaphorical Archaeology. Hey, if you've had a paranormal experience that uh, has given you a bit of trauma, give them a call at two one four nine nine five. 3754. Some changes coming to the network, I can tell you. We got some new shows coming, new podcasts coming, really cool stuff coming. I'll tell you about that uh, here in just a moment. It is the beginning of the month, so if all of you guys can support us, you can donate on the website. There's a donate button down there. You can also use the Amazon portal or grab something from the shop and get you some Voidwalker gear. So, uh, speaking of what's coming down the road, I'm going to say this. You head over to ufoseekers.com real quick. It's backed and supported by the Fringe FM. Uh, we got a little surprise for you on that front. And it just kind of, like, it took me by surprise, actually. I had no idea this was going to happen. But Tim is pretty much my partner. Tim Doyle from UFO Seekers is, is the man, right? So um, this network is at their disposal. And he is really thinking hard about getting into radio a little bit more hardcore than he was. And if that's the case, I'm all for it because he's a natural so you might be hearing a lot more from Tim on the radio waves. And a lot of you wanted that back. You wanted him back. So we'll see what happens, right? For now, go to ufoseekers.com, backed and supported by the Fringe FM and Lighting the Void. If you want to keep a journal, uh, journalistic approach to what's going on in ufology, at ufoseekers on Twitter, ufoseekers.com. Go check out their new updated website and go watch the new season, youtube.com forward slash ufoseekers. Now, I don't know what's going on right now. I, I want to send a big shout-out to Jerry Cthulhu from uh, uh, Knox Mente. He's had, and most of you know who he is, he's a friend of ours. He's a friend of the networks. He's Nish's co-host on Knox Mente, and he has had some heart failure and ended up in the hospital. And so all of us at uh, the network and Lighting the Void, we need to be sending him some healing vibes right now. So if you, most of you know who he is, but his name is Jerry and he could really use, could really use our support. And he's probably, he might be stubborn and say he don't want it. Who knows? But we all love him. So we're going to give him some healing vibes regardless. I don't know any updates on that. I've asked Nish, um, what's going on. I, I don't know. So we'll keep you posted. But I got to say, she was on a podcast the other night talking about this, uh, virus thing. And I got to tell you, man. I've been exhausted. I don't know about you, but I have been, 
I, I don't know if it's since I got back from Portland or Thanksgiving or what it is, but I feel like the life has been drained out of me. And the more people I talk to, everybody's saying that, that you know. And I've been taking my supplements and stuff, too, so I can't imagine what I'd feel like if I didn't. But literally just cannot roll out of bed, can't get out of bed, don't know what it is. It's like some type of shift that's happening. I think this happens every year, though, but it's freaky. It's kind of freaky, actually, because I feel like I'm stuck in this uh, false awakening where I can't get moving. And I've done jumping jacks, push-ups, you know, drink coffee, whatever I can do to try to get things moving. There's some kind of weird health thing going on, maybe some type of low energy. I don't know, but look, whatever it is, if you're going through it, this you, this too shall pass for sure because I think I've been through this before. If any of you guys know what I'm talking about, hit me up. Contact at lightingthevoid.com. Also, tomorrow night on the program, the one and only Jay Widener will be on. First time Jay Widener's ever been on Lighting the Void. He'll be here tomorrow night, too, as well. And uh, later on this week, we're also going to have JJ and Desiree Hurtock. And then the one and only PMH Atwater. So this is going to be a pretty cool week. But tonight, we're kicking it off with Jason Layton. Now, Jason's quest for the age-old answers, who are we and where do we come from? Standard Voidwalker questions, right? Started at a young age. And his curiosity led him to study meditation, dreams, astral travel, and channeling. And some of his greatest influences were the uh, number one AM presence, Greg Braden, Drunvalo Melchizedek, Ken Carey. A major uh, major shift happened to Jason when he was a teenager. And his mother, Debbie Layton, introduced him to the Master's Octave, which is a metaphysical channeling group that had been together for 10 years. And Jason's meditations began to provide a profound guidance and insight. But by the time he was 21, he was the channeler for the group. Within no time, the group expanded to two nights a week, and he continued this influential work for four years. When he was 27, his first book was published, I Am, Understanding Who and What You Are, Volume 1. And this book is a compilation of his first years of channeling. And I believe that was in 2006. And a short time later, Jason's second publication, The Quick Guide to Oneness, was printed. And in 2010, Jason stepped away from channeling in pursuit of a more constant and direct connection with his higher self. The Soul's Journey course is the result of his discoveries of the inner workings into our deepest reality. Fantastic conscious, uh, conscious explorer, Jason Layton. Thank you for coming on Lighting the Void, man. It's a real pleasure to have you. Uh, yeah, brother. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. So tell me, um, man, so I'm so interested in this story, right? Because I grew up in a little town. Sounds like a Tom Petty song, right? You grew yeah. up in a little town, right? But I grew up in a little town that none of this stuff happened. You know, we didn't have, um, uh, I didn't have any cool parents like this. You grew up in a way, way different life than me. Tell me about uh, your mother, Debbie, and how she introduced you into this. Yeah, if, interesting, interestingly enough, uh, she would go every uh, week to and partake in these channelings and uh there was a bar called ted's like around the corner so she'd be like i'm going to ted's i always think she was going to the bar but she was actually going to uh this channeling group so it was pretty cool and then um she like would always drop these like little tidbits of it like little information like think about this think about this and i'd be like yeah whatever mom whatever right and then uh i i, I don't know i'm 17 she invited me to come i came and i was hooked like instantly hooked i was like what? There's so much more to life than I've been shown. So it really opened me up. And honestly, ever since then, I mean, every day I'm hooked into information, just diving deeper, diving deeper, connecting the dots on how everything works, what the reality is. And, you know, what we're going to get into in the show, I mean, I can guarantee most people will have never heard of some of the concepts I'm going to share tonight because they're so incredibly amazing and deep into the understanding of whom what we are because i have been studying this for 25 plus years and i have a um a lot of great information to share and i'm i'm very excited to be here and have this opportunity to share with everybody fantastic so you were in yeah. high school like or junior high high school whenever this was while everybody's out yeah. doing their thing you know trying to party chase the opposite uh, sex whatever. I was doing that. and yeah but you but that. on the side though <laughs> See, I can't imagine this, man. When people tell me this when they're teenagers, I'm like, why didn't I wish I would have done this? Because I did <laughs> not care about any of this stuff when I was a teenager. And I wonder how far ahead that I would be in consciousness exploration if I would have, you know, got involved in this. And it's so cool that your mother got you involved in it. Can you tell me about what, why is it called the master's octave? 
Uh, all right. So the gentleman who who uh, owes his house, and then he opened it up to the public, and then um, he created a nonprofit out of it. But the master's octave is because um, the octave is the twelve um, frequencies. So it was the master twelve frequencies that were being held there. So when the beings would come through, there were uh, ascendant masters. Um, angelic beings but mostly ascendant masters were coming through so they they called it the master's octave gotcha okay the, the 12 major frequencies yeah so we're going to be talking a little frequencies and stuff yeah oh 100 yeah. percent. it's yeah. all about frequencies yeah so i've had so you were talking, uh, um what oh dad i didn't mean to cut you off go ahead no you were talking about you're, you're you're having these uh these feelings inside you right now about this like false shift happening you know it's yeah. all frequencies it's all frequency related and you can easily shift your frequency um, doesn't, I mean, you don't, we don't need supplements. We don't need anything external. We just need the proper thoughts and the thoughts are what ignites the energy with inside of us because we have so much energy inside of us. It's insane how much energy is inside of us, but we, we've, we've been kind of dumbed down to completely forget who we are, why we're here. We have no clue because of the indoctrination, which is all done by design. This isn't happening to us because you know, some oligarchy is trying to take control. Right. No, we're here. We're here for a mission, and we're all gonna excel from this mission. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people have been talking about that. Um, some people are having some really major health problems, and other people's energy are just like, "Ugh, was it Thanksgiving dinner that did this, or what?" <laughs> you know, and it's like you just yeah. can't get out of bed. And it's and at first I'm like, ah, oh, you know, I'll shake it off, man. I'll I'll do some exercise, get the blood flowing, yeah. and shake it off. But I ain't shaking it off, you know, so <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but you're saying it's a frequency. Interesting. So yeah, how do 100%. we tap into that? All right. So let's just jump right into it, right? So if we look at the earth, right, the earth is a realm that we're all inside of collectively. It's a collective consciousness that we're inside of. So we've been taught that it's a planet flying through space, but it's actually an energetic realm that we're in. And it was designed for it's a school for our soul to become a master of vibration. All right. So vibration is oscillation. It's polarity, right, wrong, good, bad, um, up, down, on, off, male, female. So this universe is based on vibration. So there's a multiverse out there, but this universe is based on vibration. So we come into this universe to become masters of vibration. That's what our souls are here to do. And we're going to have many lives um male female different ethnicities we're going to experience it all within this 26,000 year cycle that we call the great year through the procession of the equinox and we have all these incredible experiences to understand and master vibration so that's what it's all so, about huh that, that's what it's yeah that's what it's all about and how we can do that is to become centered right so when you look at meditation it's not about sitting down and closing your eyes and meditating it's about being in the being centered within yourself and when you're centered you're able to respond to what's happening externally instead of reacting when we when we react it's all coming based on our instinctual uh habits opposed to our conscious ability to respond to what's happening around us so it's all about being centered and holding a specific frequency with inside of yourself to be able to maintain those levels of energy so if you look at the human body right the human body is made up of 50 trillion cells. It's quite a bit, right? If right. you think of the energy potential of one single cell is 1.4 volts, right? 1.4 volts times 50 trillion, right? Think about wow. the energy potential there. We're talking like 70 trillion volts of chi, of prana, of energy inside of us. Now, if you look at the high tension lines that brings our, our, our energy into our homes, I mean, if the, the high tension lines are barely pushing 900,000 volts. And within our body is 70 trillion volts. So we have so much energy potential inside of us that can light, I mean, cities, the world. It's, it's, it's insane how much energy inside of us. But like I said, we have been manipulate it for us to forget that experience because we, we uh, you, have you heard of the procession of the equinox yeah absolutely the yeah, great I study year. astrology and stuff so yeah okay yeah so 
So when you look at the procession of the equinox in the great year, it's a 26,000-year process of, of the turn of the, of the cosmos above us. But what it's doing is there's a 12,000-year descension and then there's a 12,000-year ascension. And what's happening is we're descending in consciousness. So when we come into this, into this realm, we're, we're at a very high state of awareness. We come into the golden age. So when we look into our past, we see, you know, Atlantis, Mew, all these civilizations. That was the ending of the old 26,000 year cycle. So a new 26,000 year cycle comes in and then it wipes out the old so that the new souls coming in can have their own full experience. So when you look at the fall of Atlantis that happened around 12,000 years ago, and that was like the wiping of the old and the starting of the new. So we have been descending in consciousness for 12,000 years and the Iron Age was like the depths of unconsciousness. That's what that was the dark ages when we were completely unconscious of who we are. And then the, the scales tipped 2012 to where we started moving into the ascension phase. Now we're really starting to ramp up into the ascension phase now where people are starting to wake up and realize that there's more to to life than just this, you know, this this idea of what we've been sold for the last 12,000 years. So well, yeah, starting, definitely <clears throat> well, to what you're saying there, that's what we've been talking about for 420 something odd episodes here is, hey, um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> what's the human potential? We know there's yeah. more to what we can do. We know, we know there's more oh, yeah. to this. And we've had scientists, uh, you know, you name it, magicians, mystics, all on here. And they're all saying the yeah. same stuff. But what really got me and one reason why we're talking to you today is when I had Claude Swanson on here, he really got my attention with this whole idea that of this permeating realities within realities and this torsion field of frequencies. Yeah. And when you look at it, when you study his work and read his books, there's some real science to this. This isn't a joke. Oh, yeah. And um, just to think, like, if we could figure out how to vibrate just on a different frequency, we can shift into a different reality. I mean, essentially, yes. that's what we do when we astral travel. You can feel it in your body when you yes. do it, right? Yeah. And at, really, we're doing it every single moment. We're shifting in and out of multiple realities every single moment. And we lock on to the, to the, to the match vibrational frequency of the experience based on our own frequency. So the reason why I became a hypnotherapist, right? So uh, I use the word hypnotherapist like loosely, right? Because what I really consider myself is a matchmaker. Because what I do is I assist people with tuning to the vibrations that are a match frequency with their goals, dreams, and aspirations. So in my, in my experience when I was in, in channeling, I, was, I came out of one of the channeling sessions and I had this full-on experience where I was in a bubble and it looked like it was uh, inside of a gopal, like there was like little depressions on the outside of the bubble. And then I'm like, wait, where am I? And I tried to start, I started to walk and I was walking. I looked down, my feet were moving, but I wasn't going nowhere. And then all of a sudden, it was like a holographic image appeared on this bubble. And it was as if I was outside walking. And I started walking and the, everything around me was moving. And I knew that I wasn't moving. It was the imagery around me that was moving, giving me the illusion as if I was moving. So this led me on a, a, a major journey trying to figure out what that was. And what it is, is everything around us is manifested from our higher self. It's all energy potential. So if you look at the quantum physics now, quantum physics is saying the particle Newtonian reality is kind of falling apart. It's not about the particles. It's about waves of potential, waves of possibility. When you're not looking, the energy is there. It's potential. When you're looking, the energy then forms into what we term reality based on our base frequency with inside of ourselves so if you look at what we would term god or whatever the whatever the all is for you right that's what i consider the infinite it's all possibilities are within the infinite what we experience here in this reality it's a finite experience so if you're in the infinite if you're all that is you can't experience you know, love, you can't experience this because you are it. You are everything. Yeah. Everything's just any a concept story, until you know, any story. Right. Yeah. Any story that you write, you written the story. So you've written the story. So you can't, how can you experience a story? If you've written the story, you know, what's going to happen. So you have to have a way to detach yourself 
from being the creator of your story. And this is where the um, the fall of mankind has come in and the procession of the equinox and the great year. It gives us the ability to completely forget who we are. We descend in consciousness. We forget who we are. We forget our story. And then we're able to experience the story from a completely different standpoint as if we were the writer of the story. Now we're living the story and we're completely immersed in the story, you know, and then we start to ascend, which is the awakening process back to the point to where we're back to oneness. And they say, oh, wait a second, I was writing the whole story the whole entire time. But it's all based on vibrations and frequencies. And you are the key to those vibrations and frequencies. Just like I was saying, there's 50 trillion cells in our in our bodies, right? Each one of our bodies. Uh -huh. So you know what controls 50 trillion cells? There's one government that controls these 50 trillion cells, and it's your mind. Your mind controls the 50 trillion cells inside of your body. And that's why I dove into this hypnosis thing because hypnosis was very intriguing to me because what it is, is you're taking the conscious mind, bringing it into the subconscious mind where the actual changes take place because the subconscious mind is the higher self, which is programming the reality around us to experience in the finite expression. So in hypnosis, Whoa. when you put somebody into hypnosis, it's also called the hypnogogic state. Uh -huh. So right before you go into sleep, right when you're waking up, you're in this like kind of groggy state. That's the hypnogogic state. Man. And you're driving in the car and you're like, oh, wow, I'm here already. I can't believe I'm here. You go into a trance and, it, and you can you can measure these frequencies. Hey, look, we gotta, we've got to take yeah. a break, but no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, you're going right where we need to go. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be right back. I know you're going to want to hear the rest of this, especially if you're a void walker. Stay with us. I'm Clyde Lewis. You are listening to The Fringe FM. Hey, this is No Way Jose, a Northern California Piscean stuck in the Arizona desert. I'm a void walker, and I got the shoes to prove it. So what do I do when my soul yearns to delve deep into the realm of the unknown? I aim my satellite straight into the night sky and catch a smooth ride on the KTLK DB radio waves. I tune into Lighting the Void with Joe Root on the French FM. Joe, Lighting the Void is the best show on the planet. This is Barney, your friend from Facebook. Thank you and all the crew for all you do. Namaste, my friend. This is Macon from the Foothills of North Carolina, and I am a board walker. G'day, board walkers. This is Lily from Down Under Australia. The world may be small, but the enigma is great. So let your curiosity take you for a journey with Joe Root. Hey, this is V, coming in from Central Maryland, and I am a void walker. This is Kevin Darkerty, a beginner void walker. I'm from Vancouver, BC. I know a little about a lot, and you know, as Leonard Skinner said, I guess the rest. I learned a lot from uh, Mr. Root and the show. And I uh, heard it from the beginning. I knew right then he was going to be a new art bell. Thanks for all your uh, shows, and keep it up. Hey, this is Derek from Mass, a.k.a. the Night Stalker, and I'm a void walker. This is Mark from Chicago, and I walk the void to ascertain what is consciousness. My name is Jared Johnson, and I'm from Humboldt County, California. I do not know all the answers to the questions about reality. I do not claim to know the ultimate truth about life. I seek that which has been made hidden as a part of a family of explorers of consciousness. I'm a void walker. Thanks, Jaru. I think by now we can get the information. I love magic, and on Lighting the Void, each and every week, you will get to hear shows about magic, mysticism, and many other subjects that stretch your mind and imagination. So when I got my mind on the magic and the magic on my mind, I listened to Lighting the Void on the Fringe FM. It's magic. May the gods look with favor upon you. You're wondering what we're going to do to you, aren't you? Come. Walk through the mossy creek and up the hill. 
Never mind the flashing lights and otherworldly shadows. They stay hidden within the trees. Come, step up to the shack and begin your journey to the answers that you seek. This is Lady Anne, and you are listening to Lighting the Void on the Fringe FM. Okay, here we go. Ancientlifeoil.com. Ancientlifeoil.com. Now, this is for CBD. Ancientlifeoil.com. Again, for CBD. Where do I get CBD? Ancientlifeoil.com. It's pretty good stuff. Organic, non-GMO. We are the Ferrari of CBDs. Ancientlifeoil.com. You know, they say when you mention a person's name three times when you first meet that you're going to remember. So I'd say to you, nice to meet you, Ancientlifeoil.com. It's ancientlifeoil.com, right? Nice to know that you help people. Ancientlifeoil.com. Think about this. Occasional stress, occasional anxiety, occasional inflammation, occasional stiffness, and intruders that get you down. Ancientlifeoil.com. Okay, so I'm going to give you a fact for the day. So Ancient Life Oil does not help you with business deals. Hold on a second. If you feel better, it could help you make a better decision. Okay, I'm wrong. Just remember to go to ancientlifeoil.com. You're listening to Lighting the Void. The call-in number is 1-800-588-0335. If you would like to text, you can text in at 501-777-5631. All right, so Jason Layton is our guest tonight. The website for reference, if you want to go while you're listening, is J. Layton. Dot com l a y t o n or the soul's dream dot com or the masters octave dot org and before the break i mean you were hitting the high notes right here on lighting the void the hypnagogic state that realm in between sleep and awake and all of the vibrative states that we've talked about and you said that this could be measured and i stopped you man right when you were on a roll and i hated it but uh doesn't matter right we're gonna pick up where Not we left off right where we left off so how do we measure it like how do we because i've had that i've had the vibratory state i've had the thing where i got out of body and my whole life shifted um the hypnagogic state a lot of things happen so what's what's really going on there all right so let's talk about the the scientific uh portion of it right so it's measurable between four to eight uh four to eight hertz is theta and then alpha is eight to 12 hertz and now these are brain waves right so when our brain goes into these frequencies between four and 12 hertz, we move into this state of imagination. Now here's something that's really interesting. If you look at a, a, ba- a baby, right? They come into the world, they're kind of, kind of depending on us, and then all of a sudden they get to this age like one to four where they're just starting to imagine, and then they get to this like their five-year-old state and all they're, they're just completely living inside their imagination, right? The ki- little kids is like, that's all they live in their imagination. What's interesting is that their brain waves are between four and 12 hertz. Hmm. So when you're a kid, you are in the imaginative state, which gives you the ability, like like my my oldest son, he used to play with his imaginary friends and he would, he'd be all day playing with his imaginary friends and he, he would, I mean, if you looked and watched him play, he's 100%, you would think he was playing with somebody. But in his mind, he was experiencing that because what's happening is the veil between the two realms is thin. And you, that's why children can see, you know, ghosts and stuff like that because they, they, the veil is still very thin at that point in time because they're in that imaginative state. Same as when you go to sleep at nighttime. You ever had a, a relative who has passed away come visit you and you've had a full on experience with them and it, you know, been there and experiencing them because you are in that state. And it's that state that gives you the ability to go in there and create your reality. Because our imaginations, our imaginations are our greatest power and our greatest gifts to create our reality. Now, if you look what's going on in the news and on television, what's happening is our imagination, our greatest power, is all being absorbed and directed into a specific direction, right? This either this party or this party or it's all the same shit. 
Right. But there's they they taking all, all all of our imagination, all of our intentions, all of our attention, our intentions, but all of our attention and directing it into what their storyline is and what they want us to think and perceive. And what's interesting is my uh, great great grandmother, she used to watch the news and she hated the news so much, but yet she'd watch it every day, and then she'd turn it off and go talk to her, her friends about what she hated on the news. It's like. You're still focusing on it, though, right? You're still falling for it. You're not turning it off. Like You're living the thing you didn't like the first time you you heard it, and yet you keep on repeating it and repeating it and repeating it. Oh, did you see what this person did? Did you see this? And yet what's happening is your imagination is completely absorbed into something else other than your creation, your body, your temple, or what it is you want to manifest in this world. What do you want to create? What do you want to bring into the world? So if we started focusing on our body— and our, the healing potential inside of our body. If we started focusing on what can I bring to the world to help create a better world and allow those thoughts to just start coming to you. Because remember, I was talking about the infinite and the finite. The infinite is infinite possibilities. This is where the parallel realities exist. This is where the alternate timelines exist. It's all in the infinite. All possibilities are attainable. But you have to become a match vibration to it. And the key is to become a match vibration by entering into these beautiful states of theta and alpha. And that's the hypnagogic or the hypnosis state where you're able to use your imagination at a very heightened level and draw from the infinite into your expression. So before I was talking about this toroidal field that I was in and I was walking and all of a sudden the street appeared, what I realized is that the eternity of me, who I am. Right now, I'm Jason Layton. I'm, I'm walking around inside this human. But who I really am is an eternal being that is having a human experience, right? So we're, we're not human. We have a human, but we're not human. We are an eternal being. And no matter if you're in your awakened state, in your dream state, if you transition into uh, death, it doesn't matter where you are, your awareness of whom what you are will always be. This is why people, when you see, uh, you know, people can see spirits, that spirit has an awareness of itself and its identity, but it doesn't have a body. But the awareness is who we all are. And this is how we're all one. We're all one through awareness because we're all aware. And so that's the only thing that's I'm not debatable. You can't debate awareness, right? You so what you're saying is, is when we get into this, uh, a hypnagogic state or this imaginative area um, mm-hmm. where we can probably create things as fast as we think them. Because I know we can move as fast as we think. I've experienced that. Yes. We're in this state of our higher selves, basically. Right? Is that what you're saying? Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. Yep. That's, yeah. so, so, so how, okay. So why is it so hard for a lot of us, I mean, even in uh, my audience, we have to take courses and all kinds of stuff, man, to get to this state. But when we get there, I mean, I've got listeners that are listening to the show right now that are just making leaps and bounds when it comes to this. And they, they not only can they create things, but they're seeing things in real time. I've got listeners yeah. that were actually seeing what I was doing in Portland, and I didn't even tell them, right? <laughs> yeah, and so it's, yeah. free, it's really freaking me out. I'm glad that they're doing these things. But the mm-hmm. hard thing is, like, how do we stay there? How do we right, perpetuate so here, it? So here's another thing about children, right? So, and the state, theta and alpha. Um, so children, right, from the ages of one to about seven, they're in this recording state, right? So they're in the imaginative reality. But when you're in that state, you're also in the recording state. So you're recording all that data. And this is why it's easier for children to learn five different languages to oppose to someone who's 25 trying to learn two languages. They, it's it's so hard because you, the programming is already done. It's the first five to seven years is when the, when the recorder's on and it's recording every little thing. And what it's doing is recording into the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is kind of like the hard drive of a computer, whereas the conscious mind is kind of like the RAM. It's the random, uh, random access memory. So we can only think between seven to nine bits of information at a time consciously, whereas our subconscious mind can run all 400 um, processes of our liver and have our lungs and our heart and all this other stuff going on at the same time. 
and yet we're not conscious of any of it because it's running in the subconscious mind. So when we implant programs into the subconscious mind, it becomes, we don't think about it. So when you're learning to do something like riding a bike, you're, you're, when you're first time riding that bike, you're all like very focused, what's around you, you're gonna fall, the person gonna catch you. So you're very focused on riding it, right? By three weeks riding a bike, you, you're doing pretty good by yourself. And then, you know, six months down the road, you can talk on the phone while you're riding a bike, drinking a Pepsi with no hands, and just riding the bike because you're not thinking anymore about what riding the bike is. You're just riding the bike because your subconscious mind is running the program. Now, here's the issues that happen. We're programmed at a very young age. And some of the programs that we have aren't adequate for us at this point in time. So when I work with people, uh, especially on healing, right? When working with healing, it's so interesting. Like when you have a physical ailment, usually when you go back into a regression to find out where that physical ailment came from in your life, it was something that happened when you were so, so young that 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 experience, that emotional trauma wasn't able to express itself. So it attached itself to an organ or a part of your body where later on in life you have this pain inside of your body. Like where the hell did this come from? And interestingly enough, all it is, is a, is a blockage of energy because our body is made up of channels and channels of vibrational frequencies where all this energy runs through. And when we have a block, that energy can't run through it. So we have to go in there and we got to clear out these channels. Once you clear out the channels, boom, the body knows exactly what to do. Energy can run through. But if it doesn't, what we have is dis-ease and dis-ease is a vibrational frequency lower than the homeostasis of that cell or of that part of the body. So the what happens is we have all these old programs that are inside of us that here we are today, we're like, I know exactly what I want. And you start going in that direction and all of a sudden you hit a, a wall that doesn't even exist, but that wall is in your subconscious mind saying, well, do you really want that? Because you still have this program running. For instance, um, Say a, a, a lady is, is having problems getting pregnant, right? Well, maybe when she was 14, 15, 16, she might have said to herself, I never want to have kids. They're such they're the biggest pains in the asses. I never want to have kids. Right. That yeah. emotional block comes in there, right? So now she, here she is, 30, trying to have kids. That block is still inside of her. Now, you know who's great with this is uh, Marissa Pierce. She is incredible. She'll go in there, remove the blocks, and boom, all of a sudden, these people having kids left and right without any drugs, without anything other than just going in there and removing those emotional traumas that were created. And this is where we find a lot of our problems are in our subconscious mind that, honestly, if you think about what happened when you were a kid, you will never find it because your conscious mind just doesn't have that access into what the subconscious mind does because the subconscious mind is always recording. So when you go into a state of hypnosis, what happens is, is Basically, your subconscious mind just opens up. And so if I'm doing a regression with you, right, and I, I ask you a question, you, and you're, you're in a state of hypnosis, you're not consciously thinking what I'm talking about, right? You'll, you'll hear my words consciously, but you're not consciously thinking. So when I ask you, where did this happen in your life? It's kind of like, boom, the answer just pops in. And it's it's kind of like, like, this happened when I was two years old, and blah, 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 blah. It's like, oh, well, do you need that now in your life? No, I don't. Okay, well, now let's go in there and let's do this, do this, do this, get rid of it, boom, done. And now that wall, that invisible wall that's holding us back at the age 30 is no longer there. And now we can move forward. But I mean, we can do this ourselves. You don't need a hypnotherapist to do this. I mean, what it really comes down to is being present with yourself and asking yourself the questions. Your higher self is always talking to you. Are you listening? That's the question. So it's it's about getting down, sitting, meditating, being present, and asking the questions, asking yourself the questions, and then listening to the answers. So, yeah, see, I've been saying that, man, to, for a lot of people, like, hey, uh, look at the signs. Listen to the song that's playing, right? Uh, pay attention right? to everything that's happening around you. Something's yeah. trying to talk to you. And you, you think, you that's know, that's woo-woo, and it's like, nah, man, that's crazy. But... Yeah. What happens is if you really start paying attention to it, you start seeing it more and more as it's like, okay, oh, yeah. yeah, this is real. Um, all right, yeah. so I'm with you on this so far. So what did you do? Well, let's before we get into that, so I want to understand something here. So what you're saying is is our consciousness is like 
random access memory. It can only stay focused or pull so many programs out at a time, right? Mm -hmm. And then the subconscious is like the hard drive, stuff that we've been storing forever and ever that's pretty much written right. on the drive. It stays there. Right. Um, yeah. But so that when directly you get, when affects you get, our that, reality, too, though, our operating it, system. 100%. Yeah, oh, everything. It, it, I mean, what you perceive to be true is true for you 1,000%. And you can see just people who have uh, panic attacks. I mean, I had a panic attack right. uh, in a few years back. Nothing is happening externally to make you feel as if you're having a heart attack and the sweat's just pouring off you. It's all happening internally, right? People with crazy habits like smoking cigarettes and drinking habits. These are people who have an amazing subconscious mind. Because consciously they're saying, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm done. I'm over this. Ten minutes later, laying up the cigarette, right? Because their yeah. subconscious mind is so strong. They just can't override the the old programming. And that's the beautiful thing about the about hypnosis. And that's what drew this is what drew, drew me to it is holy shit, like we have a way to get into our subconscious mind and drop in the programs. All right. So if you want to do it by yourself without, you know, using the hypnogogic state, it's gonna take you between 20 to 45 days to create a new habit. And that means you have to do something continuously for 45 days. Yeah, it's kind of like the Bob over, Proctor over, stuff. Over, Play the over, record over and over again. Yeah. That sucks. Over, I don't yeah. want to do that. Yeah, no, you don't. So, But if you go in through hypnosis, dude, it's instant. I mean, we're talking like quick, very quick, opposed to the alternative of doing it 30 to 45 days, which I think the 30 and 45 days is also good too because it creates discipline. And I think we all need more discipline in our lives because we know what we want, but are we disciplined enough to get it? And what that means is, are you disciplined enough to direct your intentions in the direction of what it is you desire long enough for it to manifest? Because remember, the infinite, every single possibility exists, which means every experience, every parallel reality, every alternate timeline is a specific vibrational frequency. So if you become a match vibrational frequency to that experience, and how we do that is through repetition, creating new habits, doing this over and over and over again, our thoughts and our beliefs and our heart all connect and they draw this to us. So if you look at heart math, have you ever heard of, ever heard of heart math? Uh, no, actually. Uh, they're based out of, out of uh, Colorado, and they do a lot of studying on the heart. And they have shown that you can measure the magnetic fields of the heart 10, 12 feet outside of the body showing us that our heart is an extremely powerful magnet, okay? Now, the next thing, you heard of the pineal gland, right? Sure. So the pineal gland is in the shape of a pine cone, right? Right. So if, if you look at a pine cone and you look at a magnetic field, they are identical. So the pine cone, the physical form of a pine cone is actually formed out of a magnetic field, and that's why it takes the shape that it does. This is why the pineal gland takes the shape that it does because it is created in the magnetic field. So our heart and our mind is a massive magnetic field. And what's it pulling? It's pulling the experience from the infinite that already exists into the finite experience so that you can have the experience. Because remember, you're, you're the creator of your story. You created the story, then you forgot that you created the story, and now you're becoming a match vibration by thinking about it and about feeling it. And then you're drawing that experience into this finite expression so that you can experience it from a different perspective. And, and this is the key. The key is that you are in control through your power of your heart and your mind. And they call that coherence when you have this connection between your heart and mind. And it's about drawing the experience that you desire. So have you ever wanted like a new car or a house and all of a sudden like you're like, Oh, like, say you wanted a Jeep, right? You're like, I want to get a Jeep. How'd you know That's I wanted a Jeep, man? That's what I want. It's a Wrangler. <laughs> all right, so here you go. You want a Jeep, right? And then all of a sudden, you start researching it. And then you start getting this feeling like, oh, man, if I was, like, driving a Jeep, I'd, like, I'd go here with it and I'd do that with it. But what you're doing, you thinking about it and feeling those emotions, you're becoming a match vibration to that experience. Now, if you keep that up through discipline and repetition – through creating habits of holding that vibrational frequency, what do you think is going to manifest in your reality? A Jeep. Somehow, some way, you are going to have a Jeep. Now, if you focus on the other spectrum of, uh, you know, I'm getting sick or 
Um, people around me are sick, that which means I'm going to get sick. Guess what you're doing? Becoming a match vibration to that vibrational frequency. So what are you doing? You're drawing that experience to you. So we're in control the whole entire time. Nothing externally controls us. We are in control. So it's, it's about taking back our power and stop giving it to the external world. The external world, remember, if you look at quantum physics, it's waves of possibility. It's not a physical thing. It's a wave. It's an energetic field. It's just a wave of possibilities. We don't have to give any of it power. If someone's like, hey, Joe, man, you're an asshole. If you're like. Been there before. Whatever, whatever dude. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm not, that's, I'm not, I, whatever you want to think. I'm not taking that energy on. That's all on you, bro. It's, that's your thing, not mine. But you can then turn around and say, wait a second. I am not. You know, then you got to defend yourself because you then believe in what that person is telling you. If you don't believe it, it's not going to experience you. So people are like. Did you see what happened in the news? I'm like, no, I have no idea what happened in the news. Because, right, if you watch, if you're like, well, if if you don't watch the news, you're not informed. Well, if you watch the news, you're misinformed. So choose one. I'd rather be not informed because it's all bullshit. The whole entire thing is a mental game to take your mind, your power, your heart out of the game. So, right? what, you take, so what is you doing that, though? Game, done. That's the question. Well, what is trying to do this? Is now, it us? Is well, it something darker? You know? No, no, no. Uh, well, listen, I remember I told about it's, it's about vibration. This this reality is about vibration. Sure. It's about good and bad. All right. So if if you exalt the good too much, the experience is going to be washed. If you exalt the bad too much, the experience is going to be washed. You have to be balanced. There has to be a neutral ground, right? They call it homeostasis. You have to be balanced between the two because we've all been bad in our life. We've all been good. I mean, I can tell you plenty of experiences where I could have been better at, right? Because I, I, I chose to be bad in that experience or I, I reacted bad. So we, this bad thing and this good thing, it's all part of vibration. It's oscillation, right? It's all about polarity. We're here to master polarity. So we need both ends of the spectrum to be able to become masters of vibration. So it's part of the program. It's part of the matrix that's holding this design into place. Now there are there, there's other levels of consciousness that are that are also playing their roles in this whole entire thing. It's not just one, excuse me, one level of conscious. There's multiple levels of consciousness that are playing their roles in holding this experience together for us. But, I mean, you can look at it as bad things and good things, but it's all about experience. If you think about this, you're an eternal being. You can never, ever be gone. You can transform because energy always transformed but can never be dead, gone. So if you take a 26,000 year cycle and you transition, you know, how many times you're gonna transition, shit, say, just say 26,000 times, right? Which yeah, right. That's, that's probably millions, who knows? Yeah, that's, that's millions, but let's just say 26,000 times. In those 26,000 times, you're gonna have all these different experiences of so many different lives, and yet who you are is the awareness of those experiences. So when you transition out of here, you're taking all of that information and that experience with you. It's ah, I mean, okay. It's, right. It's, so it's so you can't you can't die. So when we look at it and say, oh that's that's a bad thing, that way that person died. No, that person chose to to have that experience because there really is no death per se. There is only a transitional of energy. So there really we see all this stuff going on with, you know, around the world. And I mean, are, are they comfortable experiences? No, but yeah. it's happening. Therefore, yeah. if it's happening, it's meant to happen. All right. And, well, I'm kind of, I'm more interested. I'm, in, I'm interested in this stuff. I want to get into, to some of what you do in your techniques, as well as a little bit more of your story too. You guys, uh, this is some interesting stuff. I mean, we've kind of been talking about this for some time now. But to hear someone else that's been doing this for 20-something odd years, it's very validating. And we're getting a little bit more details about this. We'll get to your questions, too. We're here with Jason Layton, jlayton.com, thesoulsdream.com, themastersoctave.org. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
777, and you are listening to The Fringe FM. From the afterlife and into your life, this is Art Bell, and you are listening to Joe Roop and Lighting the Void, here on The Fringe FM. I'm Ryan Gable, and I want to remind you to keep your radio, phone, tablet, or computer tuned to The Fringe FM. And visit the website, thefringe.fm, to listen to the entire lineup of shows. You can also catch my broadcast, The Secret Teachings, Monday through Friday, beginning at 12 a.m. midnight U.S. Pacific Time, right here on The Fringe FM. Alex X. Hi, I'm Alex Exum, and you're listening to The Fringe FM. OMG! People are jumping on board to the Life Change Tea Regiment. Brew, steep, and drink for a gentle, taste great cleanse. It's changing how they feel. See what everybody's talking about. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Life Change Tea aids in digestive slowdown and helps people get moving down a healthy path. We won't make claims. We'll just let you decide. Experience is much better than a commercial anyway. If you want results, log on to GetTheTea.com and purchase your Super Strength Cleansing Tea. You won't be disappointed. And if you're looking for some mind-body suggestions, go to YouTube and punch in the search bar, Health Matters Now. That's Health Matters Now. Now, put power into your health now. So, get the tea.com. That's get the tea.com for super strength tea. And YouTube, Health Matters Now. That's Health Matters Now for valuable suggestions. Get the tea.com, the tea that makes you go. This is Reverend John M. Polk. Please visit me at johnpolkmedia.com and visit my show, Quantum Hologram Matrix, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, every Tuesday on thefringe.fm. Hey, Fringe FM listeners, did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or no Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of the Fringe FM by calling 701-719-3971. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. Saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Call 701-719-3971. That's 701-719-3971. Listen to the Fringe FM on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Hey, is that a new music app? Yeah, check it out. Surfer Music Discovery. It links to thousands of online stations, but the twist is you see the song names and artists that are now playing live. That's different. No guessing. Looks like a waterfall of music. So many formats. Rock, oldies, country, R&B, jazz, and a whole lot more. How's that spelled? Surfer. S-U-R-F-R. Is it expensive? It's free. No need to sign up or sign in. Get the Surfer Music app free from Google Play or the App Store. Hola, Fringe listeners. This is Dave Cruz of Beyond the Strange, and you're listening to The Fringe FM. To call Joe, pick up the phone, dial 1-800-588-0335, toll free from the United States or Canada. You're listening to Lighting the Void Radio. All right, we're here with our guest tonight, Jason Layton. JayLayton.com is the website. Also, the soulsdream.com and the mastersoctave.org. You guys make sure that you go to Optics Planet, too. I forgot to mention Optics Planet. You go to the fringe.fm forward slash optics, get your night vision gear and all them cool telescopes. The night sky is definitely super clear in the wintertime. Perfect time for viewing through a telescope, and they've got everything there. Friends.fm forward slash optics. All right, Jason, so here's something I've learned in uh, studying the occult, and I want you to kind of comment on this, is they've got these uh, magical systems that we've talked about on the show quite a bit that's based on learning uh, the elements and the physical planes and all this other stuff. And then once you master that, let's say you master 
uh, your emotions, your thoughts, and your deeds, and your physical world, and you become the mighty magician or whatever. Then they have like the inner order, and what they do in the inner order, and I'm sure you got to master the planetary energies too. But once you get into the inner order, they all of their work is done in the psychic and astral realms, and mm -hmm. it's funny that they want you to work on yourself before you do this. But what you're telling me is it's like, you know, we can reprogram ourselves to begin with. Why do we got mm -hmm. to take this long, hard route? And this is what I'm curious about, about trying to master ourselves, you know, you know, our physical world, our emotions, our intellect and our desire and be in total control of that and completely balanced before we do any inner work in the astral realm or psychic realm, whatever you want to call it. Are you saying that we can kind of shortcut to fixing this stuff if we want to? Oh yeah. Yeah, we definitely, we definitely can shortcut it. Yeah. But I mean, the thing is, is, uh, you know, why do it? The other question is why not? I mean, why not? We're eternal beings. We're here for the experience, right? So if it's all about the experience, it's all about the present moment. It doesn't matter what you're doing in that present moment. It's all about the moment and the experience that you're experiencing in that moment and the vibrational frequency that you're holding in that moment. So it's just, it's, it's, I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful system. The whole system is amazing. I mean, it really is. I mean, you're talking about the magic and, and the planetary bodies. They're all one and same. I mean, if you, if you look at the, at the plant, you want to get into the planetary bodies, like this yeah. is what they are and what they are. So like I was saying earlier, earth is a realm, right? It's, it's really, we were indoctrinated into believing the, um, that this the is ultimate reality, right? Yeah, that that we're on a planet floating through space, and that there's you know we're just a, a speck within the Milky Way, and the Milky Way is a speck, you know. So we're we're so insignificant, which really what it does is it takes our power away from us, really, right? Because you're just an insignificant being in the middle of this massive, massive energy. Oh galaxy carl sagan's but pale it, blue dot thing yeah i get you <laughs> yeah. yeah but what it really is is we're in a, we're in a realm we're in we're in an energetic vortex in, inside of this realm and that when you look at the stars okay so the constellations as they move around they change the energetic energies that are within inside of the realm so if you look at a star through a nikon P900, you can see this vibrational vortex and this pulsation, and it's like the star is spinning, right? Mm -hmm. And you can you can see the rate of vibration of the star. So it's flickering, and it's it's vi it's it's turning. So you can measure the vibrational frequency of this thing, right? And then you, if you go on the, like NASA.com, you can hear the sound of the stars. So obviously these stars are emitting light, and they're emitting sound. So they're emitting light and sound, which is data. So now if you take one star emitting light and sound, and then you put them all together, we get a collection of stars that we call constellations. These constellations are creating a symphony of vibrational frequencies that are being injected into this realm, giving the collective consciousness an experience, and then also giving the individual an identity looking through the perspective of the personality so giving a persona so for me i was born december 6 1978 i'm a sagittarius so i i i view this reality with the filter of a sagittarian right so i'm always seeking the truth the higher learning the grander ideas of what life is and how we can all incorporate it together and the reason why i'm doing that is because when i was born at that time that star pattern locked into my chakra systems, giving my awareness who and what I truly am, giving my awareness this kind of like this film or these glasses that I'm now perceiving the reality through. So I perceive the reality through the Sagittarian perspective. So we can both look at a situation and you have your perspective and I have mine, but mine's going to be shaped through not only my upbringing or through my surroundings, but through my star chart. That is giving me my perspective and my personality. Right. So these stars are locking into our chakra systems and our systems giving us this this experience.
this flavorful experience. And then it's also changing the collective consciousness as we move through these things called the ages, right? So we're just moving out of the age of Pisces and we're moving into the age of Aquarius. Now, what's very interesting about the age of Aquarius, it's all about uncovering, right? What, 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 what has been lost. And also it's about technology. If you look at the last, you know, 300 years and where has technology has grown in the last 300 years, it's been insane, like absolutely insane how fast technology has grown in the last 300 years. And that's because we just moved into the age of Aquarius or on the cusp, right? So we really don't know the exact time of the ages because our calendars have been so manipulated over the last 12,000 years to allow us to forget, right? So we're still working off this Gregorian calendar, which is out of phase, out of sync. So we're still in this in this stage where we really don't know the exact time, but it's for certain. We're definitely in or moving on the cusp of the age of Aquarius with all this technology and all this information and all this uncovering of all this shit that's been going on behind the scenes that no one knew about. Uh-huh. Every, everything's coming to a head now because the water bearer is dumping the water in right. the collective consciousness to the age of Aquarius, which is a vibrational frequency that the stars are emitting into our reality. So we're moving into this phase of, of that, of that. So somebody knew about this then. Some, some oh, people yeah, have yeah, always yeah. known about this. If of you look into the, the about it. yeah, I mean, if the you age. look into the new Testament, he says in there, and this is just one scripture. I mean, I'm not religious, right. but uh, where he says, you know, if you see the man bearing the pitcher of water, come into the upper room and I'll meet you there. Now, yeah. I've been taught since I was little in those Baptist churches that Jesus was talking about a man walking down the street carrying a bucket of water. <laughs> but that ain't mm-hmm. true. We all know that it's a metaphorical uh, yes. symbol. And it's talking about this age that's coming where all that is hidden is going to be revealed. But it's yeah. funny that that verse kind of lets you know that, hey, it's your choice to move up into that room. You yeah. Know? So yeah, well, if you if you look at what all our ancient cultures, because remember, we came in into the golden age, right? So you have the gold age, the silver age, the bronze age, and then the iron age. Iron. And the reason why they use metals is we're called we're talking about density, right? So gold is less dense than silver. Silver is less dense than bronze, and then iron being the densest of the metals. We're talking about consciousness as well as we're going through. So we came into the golden age. And then we started to descend down in consciousness so that we can have this experience of forgetting who we are and the experience of mastering the, the, these, this reality. So as we were descending down, what was holding what was holding the collective consciousness in this? So before you were saying, you know, who's doing this to us? The stars are holding the patterns of these vibrational frequencies that we are experiencing as they shift over our heads. And wow. as we move into these ages collectively we're all experiencing the age of aquarius now we're all experiencing it differently based on our star chart so each one of us has our own star chart and this is where we were talking about earlier like you were talking about the magic that comes in and people are mastering this it's really all the same stuff the 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 magic the stars the planets they're all the same energy just at different um different angles and different um levels so if, if you look at, say, the sun and the moon, the sun and the moon are the exact same size in the sky from our perspective, right? So if you yeah. look at the the um, geocentric, right, not the heliocentric, the heliocentric model is what you know, Copernicus came up with 500 years ago to throw us off, you know, of what we are. Because if we think that we're just a planet, like I said, just flying through space, we have no power. But if we take the power back that we are the experiencer of the experience of God itself, then we take all the power back. And that everything is revolving around us and giving us the experience, we are then taking our power back. So the sun and the moon are really the same size. When you look at them, these are the ones that really affect us daily. Okay. So if you look at, uh, and we still use it today, like our, our calendars, our time are, are all based on the position of the sun, the moon, and the constellations, right? So we base our year off the sun's position, full wraparound. We base our months off the moon cycle. We base our days of the week off of the, um, off the planets. So, Mm -hmm. so, I mean, everything that we do, our whole entire calendar base is based off of the stars where our 
ancient ancestors, they all knew this because remember, they were in the golden age and they were descending in consciousness, but they still retained some of the information. And every civilization that fell, as civilizations were falling and falling and falling, they would lose some of that connectivity, some of that information. This is why you see these megalithic temples all around the world. And today we're like, ah, oh, we have no idea how they built that with such great precision. Now, what kind of machinery did they use? Because we can't do it today. The thing is, what they are are giant magnetic resonating devices and they were pulling the information the data from the stars and they were securing it into these temples and they were using it um in their lives uh, and they could use stargates they could come from this realm into another realm right so when I mean, you look at ets ets they're not flying in jets into space through propulsion right they're using a much different technology where they're it looks like they just disappear because they're, yeah. they're, they're phasing from one reality into another reality. When they phase from this reality to that reality, they're not really going anywhere. They're just shifting the vibrational frequency because all realities, it's like a big onion. We're just like a radio station that we're on now, right? Yeah. You got to tune, tune to 98.1 to get this radio station. If you tune to 98.2, you're going to get a completely different feel, a completely different reality. And that's what the ETs are doing. They're just phase shifting into different timelines, into different alternate realities and parallel realities through um, changing the vibrational frequencies of the ships. Whereas when you look at like NASA, they're, they're going into space with these propulsion devices. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're, they're saying that space is a void, right? Or, or it's uh, a vacuum. They're still trying to figure it out, yeah. Yeah, it, they're, they're calling they it a vacuum. vacuum. How the hell does, does a rocket move in a vacuum? There's no air to push against. You know, there's, yeah. there's, there's there's just no way for, for the whole the whole the whole theory that they have is it's all it's all crumbling it's all falling apart, and it's going to come down to us taking back full control of whom what we are. But the our ancestors what they studied were the stars, right? There, there was so much that went into studying the stars and understanding how they worked. And if you look at um the Temple of Giza, they have these like perfect alignments of of the of Sirius and. And uh, I think it's Polaris at these certain times of the year when they go into the chambers. Right. Yeah. And they, were, they were then they were absorbing that energy and then using it, like I was saying before. And what's interesting is what are these what are these big giant megalithic sites? What are they made out of? They're made out of rock, right? What is what is a rock and our technology have in common? Crystals. The silicon. Yeah, the the silicon. silicon. Exactly. The silicon chip. So we're we're programming the silicon chip today to use it as a computer for us to talk right now, right? We're talking. Well, I mean, I mean, we're coming out with different chipsets today, but for years, yeah. we used a silicon chip. We were putting data and memory, which is light and sound, into these silicon chips, and we were exchanging it between each other. Where what our ancestors were doing is they were directly downloading this data into these temples. And they were then using that data in certain ways, creating stargates and stuff like that. In certain ways. So this is kind of like where, man, I've got all kinds of stuff going through my head right now. So where channeling comes from, too, when, you know, people talk about downloads. I used to think that was such crap, man. <laughs> oh, I'm getting a download. And I'm like, what? You know, until, <laughs> until I got one. And I got one. Yeah. I mean, not too, not too long ago, recently, it's, it's kind of like you meet somebody in your life or it could be a character or just an event in your life. And then it spawns all these events that, that are yeah. past like linked. And then you get a download and you just see, it's like image, symbol, 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 image, 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 yeah. symbol. And you, you're putting it all together in your mind and that computer in your mind knows what it's telling yeah. you. But when you yeah. try to speak it, you can't, you know, right. Yeah. It's very hard. Yeah, it's my the trippiest thing. Yeah, my 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 whole concept of the stars was a download. I mean, I got that, I swear, within two minutes. I was looking up at the stars, and I was like, what are you? And all of a sudden, I was like, <laughs> and then it started tying in everything that I've, I've read about the our ancestors and all this stuff started flooding through, and all the connections were made. And I was like, holy shit. Like, yeah, that's and pretty then, intense. Yeah, sure. And then I kind of just started, you know, when I, when I get, when I get a lot of information like that, I have to then go and figure out how I can explain it. Cause I love to share my information. And, uh, so I always try to figure it out. And that's what my, the souls dream.com is. It's a eight lesson course that I created. And the first four lessons ties all the information of all the information that we already know 
you know, like what are fractals, what are holograms, what are, what's energy, how we're energy. I tied all those concepts together in the first four lessons. And then the, the, the last four lessons, I tied in my experiences of uh, my downloads that I got tying them all together. So it's, it's, it was and each, each lesson, I think it's about an hour. And, uh, I mean, it took me. I so know, what you're saying makes a lot of sense to me. It really does. Okay. Because I talked to David Griffin, which is probably one of the only heads of the Rosicrucian orders out here that are actually out in the public, really trying to spread a message. The other ones hide for some reason. I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah. But he told me, he said, you know, the biggest secret and the biggest thing that we're trying to figure out here is alchemy. And he said, not mm -hmm. alchemy, like Carl Jung type alchemy, where we're just trying to change our consciousness, so to speak, Right. not alchemy to where we're messing with chemicals and, you know, bunts and burners and all this other stuff, even <laughs> though these, these principles do work on a finite concept, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But alchemy yeah. to where we're trying to change physically, like really changing our energetic makeup to a different type of body where we're using this thing in our body where we're using like our body as the so as the soil to grow a different type of body that can move through light right right and i was like huh so i've heard people call this you know, you know like the rainbow body the light body i've heard everybody call mm -hmm. this this stuff before but if you're looking at this frequency stuff that you're talking about fractals uh the data transmissions between the stars and all of these things that we watch we watch tv and we watch things like stargate and stuff we, like we inherently know something's right. trying to tell us that there's something out there you know yeah um that's what alchemy is really all about i think is learning how to transition that learning how to yeah. vibrate on a different level and become whatever you need to become right which would be kind of explain why some of these aliens are doing what they're doing right that's what you're saying right yeah, yeah. I mean, if you look at the uh, calcification of the pineal gland, the manipulation of the DNA going from a 12-stranded DNA down to a, a two-stranded DNA, it was all done to give us the experience of forgetting who we are. So if, if you look at uh, science today, say, oh, well, there's 99, 95% of our DNA, 90% of our DNA is junk DNA. The, the reason why it's junk DNA is because the codons are all turned off. And the reason why they're turned off is because they give us a very limited perspective of the reality. So that we can fully immerse ourselves in this reality and think that this is all that is and that death is it and then we're gone because now we're completely embedded in the experience and we're fully in it. So if you look at what we perceive to be our reality, right, the visible light spectrum is 380 to 700 nanometers. So that's that's a total of 320 nanometers, right? Now, if you look at a piece of paper to put it in perspective, a, one sheet of paper, the thickness of a sheet of paper is 100,000 nanometers. So when we're saying our reality that we're perceiving to be the visible light spectrum is 320 nanometers, we're, we're blind. Like We yeah, are we completely are walking blind. blind. For real. Yeah. And the reason why that's happening is because uh, the, the 10 strands of DNA that were turned off, those codons, what they are, are transmitters and receivers, we're not able to receive that information that's coming from the stars. We're not able to receive that information that's coming from parallel realities, um, and alternate timelines that are right in front of us, but we can't perceive it because we don't have the, we don't have the, the, um, the antennas to pick it up. So we just, it's just out of our, out of our, our view, so to say. Right. And, and go back to the rainbow body. We're not becoming something, right? We we're going back to what we are. So we take this journey, right? We come in with a very, very, very high consciousness. We descend, completely forget who we are. And then we ascend. The ascension process has started for all of us. We ascend back to wholeness, to the understanding of who and what we are. So that rainbow body, the reason why we even know about the rainbow body is because we have already been the rainbow body and we have completely forgotten it. And now we're moving back into that understanding of what that is. And the reason, like, when we talk about densities, if we're just coming out of the Iron Age and we're moving into the Bronze Age, right, we're moving into a different density of space-time. When we move from the Bronze Age into the Silver Age, we, we can't take the same collective consciousness, the same ideas into a higher vibrational frequency. We have to drop the old paradigm to move into a different paradigm. This is kind of like what you were talking about earlier. Um, 
to move into these higher levels of consciousness, right? You can come here, you can master all this stuff, and then you can go into the astral plane. And, exactly. And all, so the thing is, is you can't go into those planes, those vibrational frequencies, with the same consciousness of a lower vibrational frequency because you would it's just chaos. There, was too, there was too much data. Yeah, and this is chaos. You know, me, my wife, we were talking about this the other day. I said it's interesting to see how much data. I had this like thought, like thinking of myself in the 1800s today, right? Like how bored I'd be in the, if I went back to go back to the 1800s today. Like, like what do you do? Like, you know, for entertainment and night days, sit around, Books, hang out. That's it, man. Yeah, Read right. and tell so, stories. And then, and then you think about us today. Think about how much data we are taking in daily. I mean, hourly. We're taking in so much data through our phones, through the televisions, through, I mean, there's just so much information going into us. If you were to take someone from the 1800s and move them into today and say, check out this technology, they'd be like, whoa, whoa, I, I, I can't do it. This is way too much. I can't deal with this. This, this let me, let me, let me get me like, <laughs> this. I, this is too much. Well, that's the, the same, times, that's man, that I've, happened. after I had the one out of body experience uh, where I felt the vibrations, right? And, it, you know, if it, try to get a neurologist to explain that to you. Where you're yeah. telling him, like, man, I felt like a tuning fork. Oh, well, that was just your nerves. No, 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 no. I yeah. watched myself sleep, man. Well, yeah. well they, gotta, they try to explain it, right? So here's the thing. I couldn't get out of my yard. Could not <laughs> get out of my yard. And I was obsessed after that. I was like, I got to do this again. I got to do it. I and I literally yeah. had beings like, oh, oh, he's coming out again. Like little shadow beings just phew, push me back into my body really hard sometimes. Like, yeah. You're not ready for this, homie. Yeah. Right? That's exactly what they're trying to tell me. Exactly what it is. So once, and then we get back to the match vibration. And once you become a match vibration to an experience, you can then experience that experience. So we can't go into these higher dimensions with this lower consciousness. We have to raise our consciousness, which means we have to be aware. We have to be present of every word that we speak. We have to be able to respond to situations and not react because when we respond, then we're conscious, we're, we're aware of our energy, we're moving our energy in the direction that we desire to move it. You go into a reality where you can instantaneously manifest and for some odd reason you get scared and think of an elephant sitting on you, boom, you know, it's it. So you have to be able to think and direct your energy. And that's what we're doing here now. We're kind of like moving into this space of all this technology coming in. Some people are like, oh, it's bad, it's, it's too much. But no, it's, it's, it's right on time. It's, gonna, it's, it's part of the process. It's data information that we're, it's just light and sound and we're just upgrading ourselves. We're being upgraded and upgraded and upgraded. And it's, it's really embracing it. I mean, there's people fear the unknown and there's so much uncertainty happening now. I mean, you can watch one YouTube video saying this and then this other YouTube video saying this. And it's like, which one do I believe? It's kind of like, there's so much, you yeah, know, it's like, too much. Know what I, it's just, I don't know which one to believe because there's so much uncertainty. The only thing you can believe in now is you and follow your heart, your vibration. Like, what do you want? What do you want? What do you desire? Like, what do you want to experience? You have that power. Put your intention in your direction in that location and focus on what you desire and what you want, because that's what you're going to manifest and lay down all the shit you don't need. Right. Listen to somebody talk, take what you like out of the conversation and run with it. You, know, you don't got to take the whole entire thing. <laughs> I can I mean, tell you're so we, passionate really, about this because we literally had a talk during the break about language, right? And there was like, but you can't, you can't stop from saying curse words sometimes when you're so passionate about things. Like yeah, what you're talking about, man, is the epitome of my existence right now. It's everything <laughs> to me. Actually. Dude, I'm telling you, it's everybody's. It's every. So I, I mean, I've known this information for a long time, and I, I, I had the ability and the opportunity to channel every night, two nights a week in front of 30 people and just me sitting down and just opening up, right? So it's just me opening up and just allowing information to download through me and just talk, right? So I just talk for an hour and it was such an amazing opportunity because I have all, I tied so much of everything that we've been trying to figure out the last, you know, couple hundred centuries. It's yeah. like, it's all here. It's all here. It's all here at our fingertips and we can do it now. We have this ability to do it now. So like I said earlier with you, I, I raised my kids to a certain age now. My youngest is uh, 14. And I feel like my wife and I are at a spot now. Now we can start really going out into the world and sharing this information because I feel everybody has the right to know it. And that's why the soul's dream, I put so much time into that thing. Like I, that, if, you, if you watch the soul's dream, that was my first time ever going on camera. I never went on camera before. I just went on camera and it's 
I mean, it, it was killer. It was a great, great, great. And that course. gets y'all and, pumped up, right? You get yeah, some yeah, and perpetual I, energy. I, and I and I, I, my 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 incentive when I was creating was like I feel like everybody should know this, so I gave it away for free. I put so much five years of time and research and just the editing that went into that. I mean, it took me, oh man, three months to do all the editing and the shooting to get that to where it is. And I turned around and gave it to everybody for free because if somebody's interested in understanding how to do it, the first step is you have to have the knowledge, the understanding, right? Once you have the understanding, you have the knowledge. The next part is the application, which is the wisdom. Wisdom is knowledge applied. So it's, it's not about just understanding information. It's about understanding information and then putting it to use. And that's where hypnosis really came in big for me, this hypnagogic state, because this is like our key to really dive into our subconscious oh, and, yeah. in, in the programs that we want to experience. So we go in there and we start reprogramming ourselves, get rid of the shit that we don't need that's in there from when we were kids that, you know, like we don't need that anymore. We can get rid of those blocks, move the into stuff the we don't need when we're kids versus yeah. the stuff we do need to keep. Right. Yeah. So now we're going to wake up every day, hypnotizing ourselves to the things that we desire. Right. First is understand, know what you want. Once you know what you want, boom, hypnotize yourself to make that your desire, your goal, right. your passion. You wake up with this fire in your gut for like, man, I can't wait to do this. It's like, exactly. I'm so excited. Yeah. Whereas well, before, look, you might have been like, that's a good idea. I might, I might get that tomorrow. <laughs> we got to take a break here, but yeah, exactly. The, the, I know exactly what you're talking about with that fire. The hypnagogic state, is, I really want to hone back in on this because I feel it's very important. It's the place that we can all get to to learn how to do this stuff. We'll be right back with Jason Layton. Stay with us. Thanks for listening to this broadcast. Need another late night fix? You can tune in every weeknight to Lighting the Void with Joe Roop on The Fringe FM. Paranormal News. I'm Brad Bernards. Mars is our neighboring planet and in many ways the most similar to us and certainly in its history. And the question whether ancient life was there is still the question that keeps us up at night. Thomas Zerbuchen, NASA's Associate Administrator for the Science Mission Directorate. The scheme being developed by NASA and the European Space Agency will involve robot rovers finding rocks that might contain evidence of past life, according to a report in The Guardian. The mission will start in early 2021 using the new NASA Mars 2020 rover. Ken Farley, Mars 2020 Deputy Project Scientist, talks about collection sites. The three key sites that we are considering right now share one thing in common. They are all environments that might have been habitable in the very distant past. Mars 2020 will collect soil samples, put them in small metal tubes, then seal them. Caches of these tubes will then be left at designated sites on the Martian surface. Then a second craft to be built by ESA, known as a fetch rover, will land on Mars and load the samples into a football-sized canister. This will be taken to a U.S. rocket that will blast the container into orbit around Mars. A robot spaceship called the Earth Return Orbiter will sweep around Mars, capture the canister, then head back to Earth before releasing the capsule so that it lands on the Utah desert. An international team has found sugars essential to life in meteorites. The new discovery adds to the growing list of biologically important compounds that have been found in meteorites, supporting the hypothesis that chemical reactions in asteroids can make some of life's ingredients. Sugars have been a missing piece among the major building blocks of life. We are not talking about the type of sugar that you put in your tea, though. These are what researchers call bioessential sugars, or compounds that play a big part in our human biology. One of those compounds as an RNA, and they think that the RNA may have evolved even before the DNA did. That's courtesy ABC 30 Action News. Since Earth is awash with life, the team had to consider the possibility that the sugars in the meteorites simply came from contamination by terrestrial life. Multiple lines of evidence indicate contamination is unlikely. Read more about tonight's news at parabnormalradio.com. I'm Brad Bernards, Parabnormal News.
My name is Jake. I'm from Billings, Montana, and I am a Void Walker. Hey, Joe Root. Thanks for lighting the void. This is Janine in the bluegrass of Kentucky, and I am a Void Walker. What's up, guys? This is Damien from San Marcos, Texas, and I'm a Void Walker. I listen to the show to keep myself aligned with the world. Hi, this is Laura, a.k.a. Laura Lavender. I'm from Las Vegas, and I listen to Lighting the Void because it helps me understand some of the strangest experiences I've had. So thanks for all that you do and for always being there for us, Joe. What's up, Joe? Hey, man, I just wanted to say your show, dude, keeps getting better and better and better. I love Lighting the Void and the Fringe FM. Hey, this check is wrong. I worked a holiday and seven hours of overtime. Not getting paid correctly is a real pain. It could also hurt our boss if our company provides out of compliance checks. That's right, construction companies doing business with the government can get fined, or officials of the companies can go to jail if the checks aren't right. It's a law. The Davis Bacon Act has 30 compliance issues for every check, but there is an easy way for construction companies to be in compliance. EMARS offers Compliant Client, a web based system that finds and corrects all 30 of the possible out of compliance check issues. Users of Compliant Client report an 80% savings in time and money. Running a weekly payroll usually takes about five minutes. All 15,000 plus clients of EMARS have never had a legal compliance issue. Plus, they sleep better on check day. Contact EMARS at emarsinc.com or call 480-595-0466. Hi, this is Aaron Hunter, host of Real Paranormal Activity, the podcast where we tell real paranormal experiences of people from around the world. And we also conduct interviews with authors, investigators, psychics, and mediums. Real people, real stories, real fear. Thursdays at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern on The Fringe FM. See you then. The Fringe FM isn't just a radio station. We also provide services for all your audio production needs. If you are interested in live radio or pre-recorded podcasts, we're here to help. We even do audio enhancements and voiceovers if needed. If you want to do a podcast or live radio show and even want the option to syndicate on terrestrial radio from simple audio file enhancement to live production and call screening, we have you covered. We have worked with some of the best professionals in the business in order to provide coaching instruction for content creation, show structure, and more. Contact The Fringe Digital Media for more at info at thefringe.fm. That's info at thefringe.fm. Or call 501-777-5631 for a consultation. the truth? Are UFOs real? Are aliens visiting Earth? Are governments around the world hiding the biggest secret in history? We're UFO Seekers, official partner of The Fringe FM, and we're on a hunt for the truth. Join us as we investigate locations like Area 51 by subscribing on YouTube at youtube.com slash UFO Seekers. Listening to Lighting the Void. The call in number is 1 800 588 0335. Well, that music is from my man Chronox at chronoxofficial.com. Go give him a shout. Download all of the Chronox albums. It's like 15 bucks if you want to hear the music from Lighting the Void. Also, the guitar man is Bundy. Just in case, because you guys ask me the question all the time. Tonight we're Jason Layton, and we are talking about, God knows, we're talking about everything that we've talked about on this show, actually. But it's all in circumference at jlayton.com, thesoulsdream.com, and themastersoctave.org. Uh, the hypnagogic state is uh, the place to play in, right? This is where we start. This is the one thing that we yeah. know. Tell me, how do we get, how do we keep this place called the hypnagogy? Like, can we stay there? How do we use this well, to help us change our okay. reality? 
Well, we, we as adults, we, we're in the range of beta, right? So we're in this 12 hertz range, 12 and above. So we have access to all these brain frequencies. So it's really, it's about becoming present and really breathing. Breathing exercises are amazing. Wim Hof does some awesome, awesome breathing exercises. Um, check him out. Cold showers, fantastic for the body. But um, it's, it's all about being present. And so let's get into this real quick. This is pretty interesting. So the Egyptians figured out how to switch dimensions of, 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 of phase shifting into alternate realities and parallel dimensions and stuff like that. And what they figured out was it's at a 90 degree shift, right? So you shift this night, you shift at this certain angle, 90 degrees, you can move from one reality to another. Interestingly enough, dimensions, when you look at dimensions in science shift at 90 degrees. And then when you look at music, the notations shift at 90 degrees. Now, here's something that's very interesting. When do we shift 90 degrees? Hmm. So if you think about it, we walk around and we stand up vertical, right? When we go to sleep, we shift 90 degrees horizontal. What do we do? We phase shift from one reality into the other reality called the dream state. Right. The dream state is our actual natural state. What we call the dream is what I call the soul's dream because what we're doing here, this thing that we call reality, this is actually the dream. When we dream, it's actually our natural state. <laughs> so if you think about this, we sleep one third of our lives. Okay, so one third of our lives is spent sleeping. So by the age of 30, you will have slept 10 years. Like how insane is that, right? 10 years of your life is sleeping by the age of 30. Well, we've got some dream the, experts that have been on the show, uh, yeah. quite a, and they come back frequently, like J.M. DeBoard and stuff, and they talk about, they're saying what you're saying, you know? Like, yeah. Uh, it's, so, so the dream state is the key spot. So now, here's here's something that you want to do. Right before you go to bed, right, when you're starting to click off, this is where you want to take your affirmations. This is where you want to take your thoughts to what you want to do to build your reality, what you want to do, what you want to experience. Because when you go into your dream state, your dream state is really your higher self. And this is what's creating the reality around you. So that toroidal field that I was talking about earlier, this is what's putting the images on the toroidal field is your higher self. So you have this ability when you go to sleep to program your higher self subconscious mind to bring about that experience you're looking to do. So the dream state is so it's not just we're going to sleep to go to go to rest. When we go to sleep, we're returning home. So bring the ideas that you want to experience in this reality into the dream state. It'll be, it'll happen in your reality much, much faster. And that's one way that you can use the hypnogogic state because remember the hypnogogic state is right before you switch from this reality to the next. Yeah. Cause there's we, been a lot of times where, uh, I know a lot of us fall asleep listening to late night radio and stuff. So I used mm -hmm. to do these experiments that I learned yeah. from, uh, Austin Osmond Spare and other folks where I would, uh, I would hold like something in my hand, uh, like say a ball or something. Yeah. And as I'm trying to fall asleep, I make sure to say I'm, don't drop the ball, right? Just don't <laughs> drop the ball. And then the next thing you know, I'd catch myself like, oh, I'm in a dream. I'm in the forest walking through the woods with these beings. But I can hear the radio still playing. Like yep. it's talking. It's the narrator of the story now. So now I know yep. I'm in hypnagogia, but then I got to figure out, okay, I'm here. Now what? Right? Now what? Yeah. And usually, usually what happens there is like you're good for a little bit and then you click off. It's like, oh, man, you slip right into the dream. You know, it's kind of like, and then you wake up and you're like, oh, well, I was getting a little closer. Mm -hmm. Right. But that's the same exactly. thing. That's the same thing. If you look at like psychics or um, if you look at, uh, what's that? Um, deja vu. Deja vu is very similar. Um, so what deja vu is, is so when you go to sleep at night, here's what's happening. You're actually creating your next day, right? So it's, our, our lives isn't a linear thing, right? It's, it's a it's a cyclical thing and it can change day by day. So every day is not the same day, although we have a lot of similarities in every single day, but every day is different and we're changing it ever so slightly when we go into our dream state. Our dream state is the state of creation where we create our reality. So when we're going in there, we're actually programming our next day. And this is why it's so important to really take that information and what you want to experience into your dream state because your higher self is then programming and holding the vibrational frequencies of what it is that you want to experience the next day. So our, our dream state is really our natural state, which is the programmer of our reality. 
that that is the toroidal field around this that puts on this holographic expression of, of light and sound that we call life. So our dream mm. state is so, so, so important. You know, the, you know what's crazy about that? I just got back from Portland, and I had more deja vu experiences in Portland than I've ever had in my life, enough to mm -hmm. where it would speed my heart up. It was freaking me out so much. Uh, yeah. The stairs at McMinimins, the green lit bridge in Portland I've seen in my dreams. I've crossed that bridge in my dreams a million times. Um, yeah. Some of the houses I've seen, the scenery I saw, the uh, I can't get into some of the details, but some of the events <laughs> that happened, right? So it's like if I'm having this super intense deja vu experience, it is mm -hmm. perpetually happening over and over and over again, enough to where I'm, I'm emotionally getting affected. What does that mean? Is that, okay, is so, that my higher self saying, hey, you need to look at this? Or... Yeah, yep. so, so here's what happened. You're becoming in tune to your path, okay? So uh, our whole life isn't written, but the day is written. The next day is written, okay? So you, when you have deja vu, you're actually seeing what's going to happen next because you're tuning in to your path. Your path is what your soul created for you to experience, okay? So the predetermination is is happening right our life is predetermined by the day but what's not predetermined is how you experience the experience and that is where mastery is gained it's how you experience the experience because the experience is already predetermined and this is why psychics can tap into timelines and certain paths that you're going to be going on to and give you a reading and say oh you know you you may have a red car in the future, or you might marry this one person because those timelines are all in line with your path. So they're picking up your vibrational frequency in your path and they're giving you a reading based on that. And it's the same exact thing with deja vu. Deja vu, deja vu means you're in tune with your higher self at that moment in time and you're able to see the future because you, you created the future. You're just tapping into that part of yourself that created the future to experience. But yet when we're here in this finite experience, we forget that we created the future, but we create our future every single night when we go to sleep because we create the next day for our experience. And that next day is already predetermined, but what's not, like I said, is how you experience the experience. So Joe, if I punch you in the arm, right? Before I punch you in the arm, I predetermined if I'm gonna, I'm gonna punch you in the arm, right? So I yeah. punch you in the arm. How you experience me punching your arm is what mastery is about. So do you react or do you respond? When you respond, this is the key. When you respond, you are taking the conscious energy of all the energy that is within you and around you, and you are then directing it consciously, which is mastery, which then gets you into the ability to get into the higher states of consciousness, which would be the, the um, rainbow body, the etheric realms, and all that good stuff. But we have to practice consciousness first now to get there. So what's, everything that's happening is predetermined to an extent, but what's not is how you experience it. Okay. All right. So here's what I'm starting to understand then. And I've looked at magic specifically. So if, like, mm -hmm. say you all, you open up and this is just one system. All right. I, I mean, you could use dream work. You can use hypnotherapy, whatever system you want to use. Right. 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 But, but magic has a way of saying, okay, what you, you ask yourself, why am I doing these stupid pentagram and hexagram rituals? <laughs> what's up with all this uh, sacred geometry and, why am I doing this? But essentially what you're doing is you're telling your subconscious, this is the program I'm going to run on while you're at the same time deprogramming all the crap that's out of your past. And then, so when you're invoking these elemental stuff, it brings, mm -hmm. it brings up like the stuff out of the hard drive. Like you're saying, okay, here's yes. what's wrong with you on a practical level. Here's where you messed up or here's what you need mm -hmm. to fix. Right. And then when you get done yeah. with all this stuff, you're totally reprogrammed. You'll never look at freedom the same way. You're, Never. In, you're in control. You're empowered. Yeah. Then you go into the astral realm and it's like night and day. And see, a lot of people say, oh, I'm a true magician or I'm a true mystic. or I'm a true practitioner. But are you like, do you know what that takes? Do you know what these people had to go through back in the day? Now, obviously mm -hmm. we have shortcuts. Like we figured some yeah. of this stuff out technologically. Um, I'm just like, there's a question in the chat that I'd like to address with you. And I think it's from elf. And he says, can't we just develop a machine that could, you know, push out a specific frequency and actually push the soul out of the body? I don't and know I if I'd want to do that, but yeah, but I get what he's saying. Yeah. yeah, no, they already had that machine. 
<laughs> they have so many machines that are frequency based that can do such good and such harm. But I mean, it's not about machinery. And this is where we want to like get away from the idea of machines, right? So when you look at like high ascended beings or, or beings of a, of a uh, say the rainbow body, right? You don't see yeah, them sure. moving. You don't see them moving in mechanical machines. They don't need a machine to shift the the phase of the vibrational frequency to move into a different timeline. They use their bodies. Their body is the machine. Our bodies are the greatest machines ever created. So we don't need to create another machine to do that. But I can see what you're saying, Elf. Like, see. We don't have the understanding now, so why don't we just create a machine to do that for us now so that we can experience that now? Um, like I said, the, the machine is definitely already created. And yeah, the body is kind of like doors. the ultimate machine. It's the mind, but, right, yeah. that gets in the way. Yeah, but, the, but you can do that um, by doing meditations. You can do that by taking ayahuasca. You can do that by taking, um, you know, other... DMT uh, stuff like uh, mushrooms. Yeah, DMT, stuff like that. yeah I mean, that that'll kick you right out of your body real quick. And you'll have this, you know, experience. Um, but the idea is to really, for you to be able to do this consciously. So if you start working every day towards this, right, like I said, that vibrational frequency is already in the infinite. That experience is already there. You're just becoming a match vibration to that experience. So if you want to experience out of body experience, think about it, research it, feel it, see it as if it's already done really. Cause that, when you do that, what you're doing is, you're saying to your conscious mind, oh, this is already done. I, uh, this experience is here. And subconscious goes, oh, wait a second. I got to catch up and make this happen. And I don't know, have you ever read the, read the book um, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon oh, Hill? absolutely. Or, it um, always so, happens in a coincidence too, doesn't it? It's, 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 such a fun, it's a phenomenal book. But he had six keys to uh, turn your desire into gold, right? So the number one thing was fix your mind on the exact now. Okay, so the idea is to see the exact amount of what you want. And then the next one was determine exactly what you intend to give in return for that money, which means if you want something, you have to do something. You can't just say it's in my mind and, and it's that's good there. It's going to happen. No, you have to put it to application to practice. Get up every day and move towards direction of what it is you desire to bring in. And then the third one would be establish a definite when you intend to possess the money. In time, say, this is exactly when I want it to happen. And then create a, a plan of action. The next thing, begin at once. This is so important. Begin today. Even if you don't have the blueprint of what it is you're going to do, begin. Just start working a little bit every single day. And that's the key. 1% better every single day. Write it out, be specific, and then read it out loud twice a day. Now, why would, why would you have to read out your statement twice a day? You're programming yourself. You're creating repetition. When you're programming, what are you doing? You're becoming a match vibration to that experience that already exists in the infinite. And the last one was visualize it as already being done. Because when you visualize it already being done, you have all the emotions, all the energetic feelings of it experiencing. And this is where... This is where the imagination is so key because we can experience something in our imagination that has not happened yet. And when we do that, the magnetics in our heart and the magnetics in our third eye turn on. They draw that experience from the infinite into our reality much, much faster. So it's so key. It's, it's funny because that was a great book. I mean, I mean so many yeah. people have read it. And it you know, outlined. he also wrote a book, Conversation with the Devil. You ever read that? No, I never read that. No. Oh man, it's it didn't. They didn't publish it because he was afraid that uh, you know he he would get too much scrutiny for it. So it came out uh, not too long ago. They said, okay, let's publish this book now. And this book is where Napoleon Hill and I've got a copy of it where Napoleon mm -hmm. Hill actually states that he talked to the devil. Now, whether he did or not, who knows? But he right. did describe how we program ourselves, and he makes yes. Satan this character in the book. That programs us with things like one of his biggest tools is called hypnotic rhythm, right? Mm -hmm. Think about smoking a cigarette, watching TV every day, right? Yeah. Even, you know, anything to get you in a state of hypnotic rhythm that will keep you from being aware of your subconscious and being able to do anything with it. Welcome to the news. Yeah, that's it, right? <laughs> Social media, the news, you know, Trump's impeachment. Like, come on, man, let's get over. Let's talk about something real here. You know, it's such a pony show. It's, it's great.
But uh, that that's that book, if any, I recommend that book for anybody that wants to understand the subconscious mind and how we are being controlled. It's called Conversations with the Devil by Napoleon Hill, which I think uh, is groundbreaking. Now, he could have talked to the devil. Yeah. I mean, in the book, he states that he talked to Satan himself, man. But I think he just kind of, in my opinion, I think he built a character. But who knows? You know, right? We, we're gonna we're gonna find out though, like when we return to you know a state of of understanding that really there was no Satan, there was no Jesus. These were all allegories to give us experiences, and they 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 were doing is they were showing us um, extremes of of good and bad, the extremes of polarity, and that these extremes exist within each and every one of us and that we have to overcome these pulls for, that are within us and become balanced, become neutral and be able to hold that. And that's why it was so important. You know, it, one of the things was thou shalt not judge, right? There's no reason to judge somebody else for their experience because you don't know what that person, what their programs are that are running in their subconscious mind, right? You have no clue. So <laughs> For, for you to judge someone on face value of what they just said, you don't even know where that came from. And then you're, you're getting your, your whole energetic field taken out and you're moving into reactions, which you're not responding anymore. And you're out of your whole conscious field, you're off-centered, and then you're, you're either pulling to the right as you're righteous or you're pulling to the, to the left as you're negative. You know? So it's this whole entire pull. But it, it's, it's very interesting. It's a very interesting story that we've been fed right yeah and, i apologize too i have to say that the name of the book is outwitting the devil by napoleon hill um okay the secret to freedom and success and they got it on yeah audiobook and stuff and everything but yeah um you know people look yeah. at this too uh and they think that well it's all about the money jason this is what it, now nah, it's like the money is the easiest thing to use because so many yeah. people relate money to success Right. right. You can define whatever success is for you, but if you can just show yeah. somebody, it's kind of like, uh, what you're talking about. I did one time and I didn't even know what I was doing. Uh, but I wanted my grandmother to win lottery tickets. And I had this program running in my head that if mm -hmm. I buy the lottery tickets for someone else and they keep it, they always win. And I let that mm -hmm. program go in my head. And she was like, Hey, let's play the lottery today. And I said, okay, well, can I borrow the Camaro? I want to borrow the, my cousin's Camaro. She didn't understand mm -hmm. why. And I was like, I want to get the feeling. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to be in the experience Yes, that I have money and I'm a lucky some bitch. That's what I want. Right. Yeah. I want to feel that before I buy the tickets. And so I yeah. rode around on the Camaro listening to music and stuff until I felt, I started having these images of, oh man, now I got a boat. Now I got this toy and that yep. toy. I'm just yep. lucky. Right. Went in there and yep. bought the tickets and handed them to her and said, congrats. Those are some two big ones. Right. <laughs> And she goes, whatever, scratches it off, won 650 bucks on one nice. and 1200 on the other. And she was like, this That's is awesome. crazy. And I said, it freaked me out too, but I was like, yeah, then that doubt, that program of doubt started running in my head. This was oh, just yeah. a coincidence. You didn't yep. affect this. Stop yeah. fooling yourself, you know. Mm -hmm. But deep down, man, I knew what happened, that something just happened right there that I tapped into, you know. Yeah. You you did the protocol though, like you did it. Like you went out there, you you did it. That that's awesome. I mean that you know, and the doubt does pop in, like oh, did I or did I not? But the thing is, is you have the story and the experience to talk about. You know, and we all have so many of those where that's happened in so many of our lives. Where and then it's kind of like then that doubt does creep in. But but see, I knew though. It's like I knew myself so well that if I would have bought, and this is what sucks, man. That if I'd have bought <laughs> the tickets for myself, it wouldn't have worked. Because that program Why? is so because deep the in program, my head. Yeah. The program is so deep in your subconscious, right? The money is the root of all evil. That's inside of all of us, yeah. right? Money don't grow on trees. It's scarcity. So we have these ideas of money that are deep inside of us that are just not serving us anymore. But the money is the, is the old paradigm. And money was created to for control, really. I mean, it's really what it was designed for. It was all about control. It definitely has the all-seeing eye on the top of the pyramid on the dollar bill, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And if you, if you if you if you look at the Illuminati, right? They considered the illuminated ones. But if you look at it from a perspective of they're just here to give us an experience. It's not good or bad or right or wrong. They're just here to give us an experience, and it's up to us individually to take back our power and not give them the power. And and no one's stopping you from doing that. You can start tomorrow taking back your power. 
focusing on what you desire, focusing on getting better, focus on becoming healthier, focus on, on you, making you the priority and not anything else. And guess what? All the other stuff falls away. It's as if it's non-existent because your attention is focusing on creating and you are then in that creation, just like you were getting in the car and feeling what it feels like. Fake it till you make it. That's why that statement's there. When you fake it till you make it, what you're doing is you're believing it. You're you're full so wholeheartedly believing you are doing that or you're becoming that, and that attracts that experience to you. Yeah, it's and like your brain is going, wait a minute, we're in a different reality yeah. now. Uh yeah. We've, exactly. we've got to program luck. We've got to program yeah. and then we've got to do it through natural, kind of like natural law, you know, where money doesn't fall from the sky. But if he scratches off a ticket, there's something that happens yes. that just in exactly. that moment that can change. And it's so weird. And see, that's what I've tried to explain to people, man. That, like, this is how magic works. It's not, yeah. you know, Harry Potter waving a wand and all the stuff just flashes out of nowhere. It's th that's real magic. We live in a magical universe. Yes, sure. we do. It's so beautiful. It really, it's, I mean, the whole design is this. I mean, you look at the stars and it's, it's incredible. It really, really, really is incredible. And we're, we're in a beautiful place. I know it's, there's a lot of negativity mm -hmm. that's kind of taking control. Like there, there has been a, so if you look at two halves, right, you look at the, the descension and the ascension, the descension has been all the negative stuff that's been happening to that's us. Right. It's been happening for a very long time collectively. Look, we'll get to your questions, content. too. we got to take a break right here. Sorry about that, uh, Jason. We'll be yeah, right back no, with no, Jason no. Layton. Stay with us. Joseph Roop is your host. Pull back the blinds and uncover the truth. This is Lighting the Void Radio. From the afterlife and into your life, this is Art Bell. And you are listening to Joe Roop and Lighting the Void here on the Fringe FM. listening to the fringe fm somewhere between abnormal and paranormal there's a show called into the paranormal i'm jeremy scott hear me live saturdays at 6 p.m pacific 9 eastern on the fringe fm you know stress is at an all-time high and all of us could use a little bit of stress relief that's why i want to talk to you about soothe now, this is an app you can download on your phone. They have a massage therapist that arrives with a massage table, sheets, lotion, oils, and music, and you're in charge. You can book in seconds and schedule at 8 a.m. to midnight. Massage seven days a week, anytime it's available. There's a 60-minute arrival period. A vetted background checked massage therapist will come to you in as little as an hour. All of the therapists are vetted by industry veterans that ensure a compassionate healing touch. So maybe you're a little stressed and you need to feel spoiled. Well... There's no better way to do that than relax at your own home and not have to deal with the outside world with Soothe. Right now, you can get $10 off your first massage by putting in the code word FRINGE10 at checkout. That's www.soothe.com or download the Soothe app and put in the code word FRINGE10. Hey, I'm J.M. DeBoard, and when I want to talk about dreams, I look up my man Joe Root and his show, Lighting the Void. The Fringe FM isn't just a radio station. We also provide services for all your audio production needs. If you are interested in live radio or pre-recorded podcasts, we're here to help. We even do audio enhancements and voiceovers if needed. If you want to do a podcast or live radio show and even want the option to syndicate on terrestrial radio from simple audio file enhancement to live production and call screening, we have you covered. We have worked with some of the best professionals in the business in order to provide coaching instruction for content creation, show structure, and more. Contact The Fringe Digital Media for more at info at thefringe.fm. That's info at thefringe.fm. Or call 501-777-5631 for a consultation. OMG! People are jumping on board to the Life Change Tea Regiment. Brew, steep, and drink for a gentle, taste great cleanse. It's changing how they feel. 
See what everybody's talking about. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Life Change Tea aids in digestive slowdown and helps people get moving down a healthy path. We won't make claims. We'll just let you decide. Experience is much better than a commercial anyway. If you want results, log on to GetTheTea.com and purchase your Super Strength Cleansing Tea. You won't be disappointed. And if you're looking for some mind-body suggestions, go to YouTube and punch in the search bar, Health Matters Now. That's Health Matters Now. Put power into your health now. So, get the tea.com. That's get the tea.com for super strength tea. And YouTube, Health Matters Now. That's Health Matters Now for valuable suggestions. Get the tea.com, the tea that makes you go. Hi, this is Sammy. Join us in the Deep South as we're lighting the void with Joe Roop on the Fringe FM. Right, my old chiners, I know it's an ad break, but before you lot shoot off and make yourself a cup of Rosie Lee or whatever else it is you're going to sling down your Gregory Peck, you need to listen to me bubble. If, like me, you found your way to light in the void via a downloadable podcast, you might want to take a butcher's at the Fringe FM Wind and Kite. You won't Adam and Eve how many other shows there are or what they rabbit on about. Ancient history, conspiracy, the consciousness, the esoteric, the occult, metaphysics, parapolitical, ufology, technology, and spirituality to name but a few. They got featured hosts like Ryan Gable, Jeremy Scott, Alex Exum, Tim Doyle, Cortana and Gigi, Susanna Ross, the Reverend John Polk, Michael Deacon and J.D. Lewis. You might find yourself listening to the thoughts and theories of the author of The Fish You Just Finished Reading. Or you could pick up the dog and bone, call in and tell everyone your own beliefs or experiences. So do me a favour. Before you put on the ansel or crack open a bottle of vino or roller joint, go to the Fringe FM and see what you're missing. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. Call Joe. Pick up the phone. Dial 1 800 588 0335. Toll free from the United States or Canada. You're listening to Lighting the Void Radio. All right. Welcome back to Lighting the Void. I'm your host, Joe Root. Tonight, our guest is Jason Layton. You can go to jlayton.com, thesoulsdream.com, and themastersoctave.org. Tomorrow night, Jay Widener will be on the program for the first time as well. Same time, 9 p.m. Pacific to midnight, five nights a week, Monday through Friday. Um, so I wanted to touch on a little bit more of the uh, hypnagogic state because I'm just so fascinated with this. Uh, I'm a big fan of Israel Regardi, who was one of the uh, original magicians of the Golden Dawn, and he talked about the astral realm, the psychic realm, and he said, you know, a lot of people like to go into these places jason and just fly around and play around but he said this is <laughs> this is a place for spiritual development for energetic development and it needs yeah. to be taken seriously um is that why is this where you do your your main work like you talk about hypnotism are you trying to get the people that you hypnotize or if you're hypnotizing yourself i don't know yeah. to that state yeah, so that you can do these this work yes Oh yeah. So uh, when I first started, like when I first came across channeling, I was, oh, like I said, I was like, wow, this is incredible. So I started meditating every single day. I mean, religiously every single day. And in my meditations, I knew what I wanted to do. Like I wanted to connect. Right. So at first it was like, it was just avoid darkness, not much going on. And then I, then I started hearing messages kind of coming through uh, over time and I was able to like ask questions back and forth and then I was able to start visualizing and seeing and I don't know what realm it was I mean I, I don't know if it's the astral realm or whatever realm it was 
but I know that I was able to move into a state where my visual cortex opened up and I'm able to have these experience with um, other beings and have communications with them. And that's when it really started like really firing off me when that, when that started happening. And I was like, the, the key was to be disciplined to do it every single day. And being disciplined allowed me to have those, those many, many years. I think I have like 260 recorded sessions with, um, with my channelings that were all, uh, they were all recorded. They were all transcribed. We had a great group of, of people that were, that were working behind the scenes to make it all happen. I mean, it was, it was awesome. It really, really was awesome. But it, it, that, that state to access each and every one of us, it's our birthright. <laughs> so well, all we have to do is take the time to get in touch with that. And you can, you know, you can, you know, smoke weed or you can do ayahuasca, you can do shrooms, you can do acid, you can do all those things that could assist you. Because I, I believe that those kind of drugs, what they do, remember I was talking about the perceptions of, of, of the reality that we come in and we have these like um, glasses on and that we can only see within the visible light spectrum. Well, I believe that when we take these kind of hallucinant, who's, oh, can we speak anymore? Hallucinogenics, too, too yeah. Yeah. hallucinogenics. What it's actually doing is it's actually removing some of the filters to give us the ability to see into the other realms that are around us. And I've, I have done um, some hallucinogenics before and they definitely have opened me up i mean completely opened me up to see other realms and i was never the same since and it just completely showed me what the reality was and how it works so but i also had those experiences too when, when i was channeling and i would come out of the channeling session and i'd flip right out of the channeling session i'd flip into like a like a, an experience like i was saying about the tutorial field around me i've had many of those and uh, they just sent me on so many rabbit holes and searching, figuring out what it was and how it works and how we can experience it. So, and and for the hypnosis stuff, hypnosis really, all it is, it's not a thing that's done. It's just a frequency that we can get into. And when we get into this magical frequency, this magical state, we can remove programs that we no longer desire and we no longer need and we can insert programs that we desire to have in our lives. So what I like to do is um, I really like to focus on like the healing kind of stuff. I, I, I find that fascinating that people can heal themselves. And so that's where I like to put my energy now, kind of maybe through the next couple of years and really explore that and help people heal. So what I'm doing is I'm creating um, a thing called activation healing. And my goal is not to heal somebody, but to show them the state to get into and the mindset to have through them to activate their own healing. And um, since I have the nonprofit, the Masters Octave organization, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a lot of charity work through that. So people who can't afford um, some of my sessions, they can go through the Masters Octave and 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 get it through donation based. Because so I don't, I feel like everyone should have access to this this information, and everyone who is willing and wants to try it should be able to try it and not by limitations of, of the financial reality of the financial world. Because a lot of people who are, who are sick don't have the finances, you know, and yet they want to get better and they've tried, you know, all the, all the medicines and all that stuff and nothing seems to be working. And to come to find out that all they had to do was remove blocks that were within their systems and within their, within their bodies and their healings happen pretty quickly. Wow. And, that's that's really what I want. I want to focus like the cigarette smoking and stuff like that. Um, what I like to do with that, like with cigarette smoking, is not make cigarette smoking the uh, the thing. Focusing on what it is you really desire to have, and making the cigarette smoking stopping uh, like a like a a push, like an assistance to really help you achieve what it is you want to have. I would you like know? I would like you to hypnotize me away from little Debbie's. Can you do that? You know, 100%. The little, the little 25 cent rack. Well, they ain't 25 <laughs> cent anymore. You know, <clears throat> I've got a terrible addiction. Like Debbie has done me wrong in my life. You know? Oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. So we can make well, any, little any, Debbie the enemy. How about any, that? Any, anytime, anytime you want a session, absolutely free. I I will do any, any my session for you for free, buddy. 
You know, we've had uh, a therapist come on here, like young end therapists and stuff, and talk about how, um, and just to be honest with you, and I want to hear what you think about this, they talk about how um, hypnosis is almost <laughs> like dangerous. Like it's a penetrating thing of the brain where you can really get into somebody's subconscious and do some damage, right? But oh, then yeah. at the same That's time, true. I guess, yeah, I guess it's all about who you trust, right? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I, you, you can have a conversation with someone and if you accept what they're saying, it can, it can damage you. You know I mean? It could damage your, your image of yourself, your self, your self consciousness. I mean, someone's like, oh, you don't look, you, you, you don't look good in that. That's not good. That, that outfit doesn't fit you. That can damage your whole entire night. Like, oh, fuck. Why right. That sucks. Tonight, you know? Yeah. I so yeah, you. that's, it's, it's the same thing. I mean, there's good and there's bad it's about vibration and frequency and i mean honestly people who are doing hypnotherapy are usually people who really want to help people i mean i haven't come across anybody really doing dark work with it but that that is happening too i mean look at mk mind control yeah. right if you look at the mk mind control stuff they're using it for eh, well you would say it was not so good purposes yeah, it's <laughs> the know? same stuff too like the repeating patterns and the repeating memes and stuff on social media it's like you can a use slow anything. hypnosis Yep, you can use anything for good, and you can use anything for bad. I mean, and it's really up to the individual to use their own discernment and their own, you know, their own gut feeling about what they feel is good and what's not good for them. And you yeah. really can't hypnotize somebody to do something that they don't want to do, really. Yeah, that, I mean, that doesn't happen. Yeah, so, I mean, so you're not going to go against your moral code. <laughs> early, earlier, you'd mentioned, and I got to get this out of the way because somebody in the chat it's just bothering them to death, right? So er, <laughs> earlier, you'd mentioned about the the constellations and stuff, and they're saying, yeah. well, in the tropical system, November is Scorpio, which is based on the equinox, but he was talking about constellations shooting us with energies, and with a December sixth birthday, that would be a, a Scorpio. Scorpio, so, yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. they're saying, you know, uh, you're yeah, talking about the wrong stuff. Which to me, I get the whole uh, concept, okay, of what you're saying with right. the energies of the stars. Like, I'm not so interested in being right about the semantics, honestly. But right, yeah. it seems like well, I like, need to address it. Yeah, no, no. It's it's a it's a great question, and I get it quite a bit. So there's the sidereal, which is the actual positioning of the stars, and then there's the tropical, which is the constellations based on the seasons. And uh, I grew up in the States, so I was taught more of the tropical astrology. Mm -hmm. And um, so I really, I never really dove really deep into. Um, Sidereal, yeah. Yeah. To, I mean, I, I, that is the, act, the, the actual positioning, yeah, 100%. But tropical astrology plays a very uh, hand in hand kind of comp they're like they compliment each other yeah i mean i've i've gotten a reading from uh jeff Harmon who does both and he'll do mm -hmm. your western astrology and then he'll do your eastern astrology yeah. and what you'll find and he does like several different types of astrology too oh right? yeah and yeah. so he does it all comes to the same stuff you know yeah yeah i mean there's, there's really 12 archetypes and through those 12 archetypal energies they just fractalized down right so it's just fractals 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 of the same energy just twisting in at different angles mm -hmm. yeah both readings will come out accurate for some crazy yeah. reason and they just yeah. do and uh after i i mean i've got my head just so wrapped and perplexed about this before that i was like you know what uh they both work so i'm good yeah um it yeah. looks like we got a caller looks 618 area code you're on the air with jason layton who he's speaking with Hey, this is Pat. Hey, what's up, Pat? What's up, Pat? Not much, man. I hate to make you guys kind of go back, but I kind of got a question for you on the hypnosis thing. All right. Sure. Okay. I watched a show, and this guy had a – he was a prison guard, I think. They hypnotized him, set him up to do a false assassination, and he did it. He was the only yeah. one that did because they did, yeah. like, 10 or 15 people but him he did it and he was he don't remember nothing hmm. yeah uh, darren darren brown did was it on the darren brown show i know darren I brown think it was the dude it, 
Yeah, so, you can so get on that, YouTube and find the clip of it. Well, That's I know, I know, Darren, Darren, if you if you Google Darren Brown, he did something very similar. I think like two years ago, where he took a bunch of people and he hypnotized them to do something like that, where one of them was to throw acid in someone's face, and then one guy they they programmed one guy for weeks and weeks and weeks to shoot somebody on cue. And he winded up shooting somebody. Well, obviously there was a, was a blank in the gun, but he stood up and, and, and shot somebody. But you're talking like it wasn't like a one-time thing. Like it was they did it, hypnotized him one time, and he did it. That was like they worked on him for a while to get him to do that. So, I but listen, I'm not, I'm not I don't saying remember nothing. If they did I'm not a... saying no, nothing's not possible. Anything, I think anything is possible. Okay, that's what I was confused on because you were like you can't break your moral code. And I was like, man, I remember watching that. And that guy didn't see, I mean, yeah. he was a prison guard. And I don't think he was, you know, like psychopath or anything. Right. Yeah. Well, I would, I would say, I mean, I should have phrased that better for the majority. Most people will not break their moral code. And it's, it's very, you got to get somebody super, super highly suggestible. I mean, it's like, it, it yeah, I'm not happen. sure how that stuff works, man, but that stuff, yeah. It's been going on for a while. Like when his son of Sam, didn't he say the dog was talking to him? There was one guy that said the, that this Uber app was talking to him. So it makes yeah. you wonder like, oh, okay, they're sending oh. out certain energies. And I guess the most, uh, I don't know, man, like the most, I don't hate to say weakest minded people maybe. Um, Cause come on, like we all have dark thoughts in our heads all day. We'll think just something crazy. Like, why did right. I think that? You know? Yeah. But it doesn't mean we've got to well, answer the call. Well, if you look at the MK mind control, what's well, really outside of your conscious ability, like like Pat was saying, like the guy had no idea that he even did it. Once once they get to that one point so deep in their subconscious that the conscious mind has no clue what's even going on. Like the like the like guys obviously had no idea that he did that. But um if you look at the MK mind control stuff, they're doing similar stuff like that with the with people through the MK mind control program and the super soldier program, if you look into that. So it's all it's all mind control. Real stuff. Good, but, good, uh, okay. Good question. Good call. Appreciate Thanks. You answering my yeah. question. Yeah. Good talking to you, Pat. So, what do we do then, right? So, as far as you're concerned, you, I know people say, well, man, just focus on the positive. Don't focus on the negative. You hear that a lot, right? But it's not yeah. so easy when you're bombarded yeah. with television and social media and your phone is an attachment to your arm. How do we yeah. protect our subconscious when, for the most part, we're not even aware of what's happening? Yeah, and the, I mean, that's it's definitely a pickle. <laughs> it's definitely a pickle. But here's here's the issue with the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. The conscious mind is only, you know, 5% of our reality, where 95% is ran by the programs inside of us. So when we consciously want something, right, we're consciously thinking about something like affirmations. This is why affirmations don't always work is because... We're only doing our affirmations 5% of our day. We're at 95% of our day. We're in our thoughts thinking about what, you know, our, our experiences. Mm -hmm. But our conscious thinking is so limited opposed to the subconscious. The subconscious is, really is the ruler of our experience. I mean, we live in our minds. Like, well, is, when I'm, talk, like when I'm talking to you right now, you're thinking. Well, <laughs> if, I, if I look out into the world, right, and let's say I'm focused on a, a road sign. My mm -hmm. conscious mind is focused on the road sign, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but the subconscious is taking in everything, right? Everything. It's yeah. taking in all of what I see, but my mind thinks I'm only focused on the road sign, but later something that, that I took in from that scene may pop up in my life if it's presented enough, right? Oh, yeah. So it's presented under the radar, so yeah. to speak. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, like when you when you get a car, Right. Like you, you say you, you get your Jeep, right? All of a sudden you see Jeeps everywhere, but yet the Jeeps are always there. But now once you became consciously aware of that Jeep, it's now everywhere. Or, you know, I mean, anything you think of and you get all of a sudden it's everywhere. And this that's, is essentially that's what I'm talking the, about. We've got to be at least at the very least become aware of this. So once we become aware of this, we can see how we're all. And I'm not saying we're all under control because we're not. Obviously, you and people that are listening to the show are aware of these things. They're aware of what they put their mind on mm -hmm. and what they're focused on. But it's kind of hard to tap into these potentials of what you're talking about is manifesting and stuff and the, the light body and all these things without even understanding that, you know. And right. I have sat down, Jason, and tried to explain this to friends of mine. 
Like they just don't get it. Like, okay, you're talking about the subconscious stuff again. I don't get it. Yeah. I, I have no way to explain it to them, you know? Yep. I know that's the pickle. I mean, and that's, that's honestly what I've been spending all my time doing was how can I relate all this information that I've learned over the last 25 years and make it practical and make it something that we could use, you know, not, I don't want to go out there and talk about some, you know, talk about the stars, but then not use it. I mean, I do moon, um, meditations and rituals every single month because they're so powerful. You do them, you do a new moon, uh, ritual or meditation or whatever you want to call the word, you know? Right. And so the new moon is about bringing stuff to you, right? Whereas the full moon is, is where you're going to start releasing stuff. So you focus on releasing, getting rid of stuff. And if you do this every single month with the moon and focusing on the uh, constellation that it's in and using affirmations based on that constellation, it is incredible how powerful it is. Because like I was saying earlier about the about the uh, the sun and the moon being the same size, the sun and the moon are so personalized to us individually. They affect us so deeply um, that when we start using them daily, you know, sun gazing, you can do sun gazing, and then using the affirmations with the moon. I mean, there's so much power there. There is so much power to amplify your desires and your goals. It's like it's it's strange that not to use it. You know, like there's there's so much energy there. That we're not even tapping into, and yet we have, we have it there at our fingertips. And you're right. You're so right about that. Uh, yeah. But we all get labeled as witch. I was watching this movie yeah. last night, Agora. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen it, but um, about Hypatia, the philosopher, back when the Library of Alexandria got tore apart, when the Christians mm-hmm. and the Jews were, and the pagans were all just beating each other up, and it right. kind of showed how we all came, like our beliefs got in the way. Like our beliefs got in the way, we warred about it. Meanwhile, the philosopher, Hypatia, was just asking questions, right? Mm -hmm. All she did was ask questions about the universe and was labeled a witch and murdered and martyred for it, you know? Yeah. We still have that here today, believe it or not. I'm not trying to take this to a negative thing, but certain parts of this country we do, and even over in the East, they're still stoning people for asking their own questions. Nope, yeah, that's definitely true. So how remember, do we we're, get to we're this just getting out, state, man? You know, we're just getting we're just getting out of the Iron Age. Remember that it wasn't what four or five hundred years ago we were in the Iron Age. I mean, we just got out of the densest part of the trip. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, it's it's crazy. If you if you think about, I mean, to go back, not to go dark, but if you think about all the wars that have, have been on American soil that America America has created, right? Right. I think I think the death toll was like I. Don't quote me, but I'm going to say it's like. It's a lot. Let's just say that. Yeah. 900, 986,000 people, right? I have it in my course. 986,000 people. But do you know that there was like 100 million like Native Americans killed? Like it wasn't, the number was astronomical that there was more Native Americans killed than there were out of all the wars that were from that America was, that the uh, United States Army was in. Like, how insane is that? And that was only 300 years ago. So we are just peeking out of the dark ages right now. Like, consciousness for the collective consciousness is like, it's tipping the scales where people are waking up, but yet there's still a lot of darkness around. I mean, if you look at the TV today, I mean, there's shows about, I mean, they're praising Satan, right? There's a Satan show. And then there's there's all these shows have like all these satanic things inside of them right so you're talking the about the uh, sabrina the teenage witch right yeah where they're like praise those. satan that's crazy man yeah no i and can then laugh there, at it though is it, isn't there a show called lucifer though yeah yeah yeah. lucifer where so where lucifer's lucifer? a detective and stuff but yeah they're like, still they're still just trying to paint lucifer they're trying to paint right. this whole story of lucifer which is we're still right. perpetuating that story and it, do, right. it still doesn't make sense if you really look at uh, folklore, history, who Lucifer really was, the fall, all this right. stuff. Yeah, they're still trying to make him out to be Satan or the devil. Right, and it's like, man, yeah. we're about to be in 2020. I'm not saying he's the good guy by no means, okay? But yeah, we don't even have our facts right about our mythologies yet. I know, I know. That's the thing because we have all we we like I said, we just came out of the the depths of our unconsciousness, and the burning of Alexandria was the, was that was all of our ancient knowledge that we didn't have that could have been like oh this is kind of what happened well let's get rid of all of that now we have nothing (laughs) 
<laughs> we have no ties to the past. We have no idea what, what happened back then. I mean, obviously, people are waking up and channeling and, and doing all that stuff and bring that information forward now. But, um, I mean, do you, books and all that stuff, it's all gone. It was do all you pillaged. ever worry about, like when you channel and stuff, do you ever worry about, let's say you, either you're going to the astral realm or you're channeling or, or you're doing what you do. Do you ever worry about mm-hmm. that you're being influenced by, let's say, I don't know, a negative force? How do you make sure that you're not being influenced? The feeling, the feeling you get. But I don't, I don't channel anymore like I did in 2010. I, I you know what, I felt like you, you sit down, you just allow this energy to come through you and you kind of like, it, I was, I never, cha- I never, like in the beginning I did because I was, this is the way I was, I was told and shown how to channel was to bring a being in like Jesus or St. Germain or something like that. Uh, but then I got to the point and I said, you know what, I'm not channeling anybody, but I am. Because I believe that I am is one. I am is everything. No matter what being is, that being states I am. I am aware of myself. I am me. I am whatever. Yeah. So I always channeled I am. And I never gave it a name. And someone would be like, oh, who was that that came through? I'm like, it was I am. It was you. It was it was whatever you got from that. It was your higher self giving you that information for you to, to do whatever you see fit with it. So I always focused on I am. So I never really focused too much on other beings. Um. But then I said I stepped away from it because I felt like I wasn't living the information. I felt like I'd, I had all this good information coming through and everybody would be like, oh, man, that was really awesome. And then the next day or two, I'd be like, oh, I, I could have did that better here and I didn't do it there. And I, I said this, but I didn't do that. And I'm like, you know what? I want to live it. Like I want to wake up and live the information. Like I want to just allow my higher self to just experience the reality and, and be it. So that's yeah. why I kind of stepped away from the traditional channeling and now i just feel like i just channel all the time <laughs> i just channel my higher self the, oh, the cool. love and compassion of who i am and i just share it with i got a, whoever I, wants to listen i got a few more questions <laughs> i want to ask you about channeling even though i know you don't do it it all yep. helps me to understand uh what's going on with some of this stuff some of these esoteric texts and some of the channelings that have happened and also i want to talk to, about your websites and what you offer and we'll get to the yep. last of your questions as well we'll be right back with jason layton stay with us guy. This is Al. I listen to Lighting the Void because it's interactive radio with good content, interesting guests, and a humble host sharing his journey through the esoteric. Hey, Joe Roop. Thanks for having us along for the ride. Thank you so much for the delight, believe me. Well, I got a lot of ground to cover. Introducing Shadow Light Tarot from Waking Canvas. The Fringe FM's new contributing artist, Eric T.C. This hand-illustrated black-and-white self-published deck serves as a reinvention of the tarot never before witnessed. Each of the several suits of this 88-card deck lineup form an infinite panoramic scene. Even the included visual companion guidebook is entirely hand-illustrated, cover-to-cover with beautiful visuals and esoteric symbols and artwork. The newly released deck comes in a custom magnetic box with its own travel pouch. The Shadow Light Tarot Premium Deck and its travel sized mini deck, Wonder Light Tarot, are both available now from wakingcanvas.com. If you use the code word FRINGE, that's F R I N G E at checkout, you'll receive an extra 10% off your entire order. To discover more, including a free reading and time lapses of all the illustrated artwork, make your way over to wakingcanvas.com today. That's wakingcanvas.com. Listen, I want to tell you about G.I. Joy from GetTheTea.com. It's the best alchemical concoction of goodies for your stomach and digestive system I can recommend, and that's all based on my experience. Packed with colostrum, acidophilus, aloe, peppermint, and turmeric. If you do your own research, then you know this is the bee's knees for the stomach and digestion. Now, due to Big Brother's ears and the eye in the sky, you know I can't go into the details about what it helped me with, All I can say is, I got relief. It's non-GMO, no fillers, no preservatives, manufactured right here in the U.S. of A., and delivered to you by the only people who stay on top of the game and are out in front. Go grab a bottle of G.I. Joy at GetTheTea.com and see what all the fuss is about. Again, that's GetTheTea.com. 
so you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on 24-7 with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. When I'm done running with the wolves after hunting down a half-ton bison, I look forward to a mind-teetering escapade evening on The Fringe FM. We all have that story to tell in our lives. The winds were howling. The ground shook. You could hear rushing water. And then, history repeats itself. When there's no power, refrigeration fails. Stores with their shelves strip bare. ATMs can't operate. Deliveries stop. Then what? These events can last days or weeks. You need a plan. In statements made during recent interviews, FEMA Administrator Brock Long has repeatedly urged all Americans to understand three truths. FEMA is broke. The system is broken. If this is the new normal, Americans can't rely on federal cavalry when disaster strikes. Don't get caught out in the elements empty-handed. Prepare with us by going to preparewiththefriends.com and get your two-week food supply, 92 servings, eight food varieties with 25-year shelf life, normally $137, now only $75. Or get a month's supply, normally $247, now only $147 shipped in one business day. Just go to preparewiththefriends.com or call 888-440-7931. That's 888-440-7931. Get this great offer and be prepared while it lasts. Ew, yuck. They're unhealthy and gross. Bugs, I hate bugs. We keep a clean home, but occasionally bugs show up. Well, I found something that is tougher than bugs. Orange Guard. From contact, it kills bugs. Plus, Orange Guard kills hidden bugs and keeps new bugs away for weeks. I know. I use Orange Guard. Plus, all of the ingredients of Orange Guard are on the FDA generally regarded as safe list. Orange Guard may be used around food, humans, and pets. It promotes a healthier planet. And here's a bonus. Orange Guard cleans where it's sprayed. Plus, it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Orange Guard. You can get Orange Guard at Ace Hardware. And listen, folks, Orange Guard is tougher than bugs, and it's safe to use. Go to OrangeGuard.com. That's OrangeGuard.com. All right, everyone. This is Justin from the UK. Excuse the chitty chitty. If you're into the fringe and you want to hear the brass tacks, me old China plate, Joe Roop, and his guests on Light in the Void will open your mince pies. You need to shut your north and south and use your 10-speed gears and listen to them bubble. You could hear a Barry Crocker, no Brussel, but he ain't no holy fryer. Anyway, you beat a Barnaby Rudge and take a butcher's. To call Joe, pick up the phone, dial 1-800-588-0335, toll free from the United States or Canada. You're listening to Lighting the Void Radio. All right, so Jason Layton is our guest tonight. Please go check out the website, jlayton.com, thesoulsdream.com and the mastersoctave.org. You know, we didn't even get, really get into your story too deep, Jason, but maybe when you come back on the program, we can talk about all of the things that kind of happened to you. Because we're in the age of the storyteller, man. People want to wake up. They want their power back. Uh, They want their magic back, but they also want to hear about your story as well, you know. And uh, here's something I want to talk to you about. When I went to Portland, I had an experience with a really good friend of mine where they they were kind of oblivious to how negative they were being on themselves, their situation, and their surroundings. And see, when you care about somebody, you know, everybody says, be positive, don't be negative, right? But Mm -hmm. when you care about somebody and you see how they're constantly just cursing their own reality (laughs) and you can't get through to them, you can't get through to them you're like stop just stop doing what you're doing you're 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 going through these repeating cycles you come to this point where you're like i have to get away for a minute i'm literally having to get away from somebody 
that I care about before it affects my consciousness, before it starts getting into me. And that yeah. really bothered the hell out of me, you know, because I don't like the feeling of not being able to fix the problem, I guess. And sometimes I have a hard time just walking away. So is there something I can do where I can just program a seed, like a magical seed of, of perpetual subconscious energy that will get them to see <laughs> what's really going on and be able to walk away and come back later. You see what I mean? It's just yeah. a pain in the ass sometimes. No, it definitely is. And, and for me, um, you know, working with people, you can't change anybody. I mean, they have to want to change themselves. So what I do is I just help them see the change they want to see. So when someone's saying, you know, all the negative things that are happening, I, I, I focus the attention back on them to see where the negative things are happening in their lives and how they can see how they are the ones creating that, that, that experience in their lives. But I mean, for me, you got to take like a stand where you can't fix everyone. You know, I would love to, I'm sure we all would love to fix everybody, especially the ones that we love so deeply, but maybe that person's there to test us and see how strong we are with our own beliefs, you know? So that's I mean, true. I never looked at it that way. Yeah. When, when I, when I, when I come across a stubborn person, I, I do what I can, but I don't, I don't, I'm not tied to the outcome for them. Um, I know what I know and I feel what I feel and I am 100% into my, my reality. You know, I, I, I'm good with myself. I know where I'm at. Um, and if I can help somebody change, awesome but if somebody's not willing to change themselves or take the advice i mean there's nothing more that i can do other than just support well, them in their experience <laughs> what i found is is that the people that are plagued the most are the people that have the most to offer i'm not saying that mm -hmm. other people don't have things to offer the world but these people that i run into and i guess it comes from running a radio station too Time and time again, yeah. it's the ones the ones that come in that th already think that they're fabulous and they're big stars really aren't. <laughs> I hate to tell yeah. you this, but and then it's the ones that the ones that come along that have a passion for the craft, and you listen to what they do or you listen to what they want to do, whether it's writing or talking or storytelling or something, and they're like, "My right. God, there's so much talent here." They don't even know it, and yeah. you try to express to them how good they are. And they just won't believe it. They won't yeah. believe it. They won't take it in. They, they don't understand what they have. And it is the most damn frustrating thing in the world to me. I think that's why I want to figure out how, maybe I'm being selfish, but I just want to figure out how I can get them to see it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's... it's it is, isn't it? Like wasted it's, talent. Yeah. Like you've seen it. I'm sure you... Oh, with the yeah. people you've worked with, you're like, damn, you know, like, like this person's really hurting and they've got so much to offer. They've got so much right. power they don't know about. It's hard. Yeah, so a, a lot of people deny their power. A lot of people deny their power. Um, I mean, how many, how many spiritual people do you know who are poor, right? Like just getting by and I mean, cause yeah. they, they just don't feel worthy, you know? I mean, people with so much talent that they just, they're just getting by cause they just don't feel worthy. But it's, it's for that, I, I like to show them their worth, like have them tell me, tell, like create a scenario of, of showing them what their worth is, you know, I see what or, you're saying. or a good one, a good one would be, um, to tell them a story about them, but use it as like your, 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 your friend, John, but yet it's their same exact story. We're very, very similar. Um, so what it does is you're telling a story, right? So the story is so powerful. But you're telling them a story that's similar to their story, and you're able to insert the uh, the the outcome that that really everyone wins. You know, like oh yeah, my my friend John, he had a very similar scenario, and this is this is exactly what he did, and man, it it helped him out tremendously. So that they're able to put themselves aside and see the success of somebody else in the same similar situation. Um, that that's a pretty good one too. When someone's kind of like just can't take it take their own um or their their own satisfaction you know, or self sabotaging shot. too, you know, that's the, another thing yeah. that I've seen when somebody that they get on the edge of success, they're right there. They're right oh, I'm yeah. talking about 
they've got their toe in the water, man. They're about to, <laughs> they're about to just dive in, and then they go through this phase of just, just self annihilation, right? Yeah. What yeah, the hell happens. is that about? We all have it. We all it's those programs that are so deep within our subconscious. Like it's it's insane. They're deep within us. But when we find ourselves in those funks, that's the time you have to become centered. That's where you get your strength. You get your strength from going internal and listening to yourself and really feeling the feeling in your gut, you know, like really asking yourself the questions and feeling. I mean, you can, there's so many different ways you can do it. But you believe in cycles, right? Where you see like a karmic cycle or something that just keeps happening over and over and over again. And it's like, hey, wake up, you know. Um, everything is cyclical and they don't see it. They're like, this always happens to me. I'm cursed this way. And you're like, no, it's, it's a cycle trying to tell you to wake up. Right. Um, yeah. almost like when people look at Saturn as the bad planet trying to kill them all the time, it's not really, <laughs> it's just trying to show you something. It's a character well, test. That, this is, this is, this is the nature of the human. The human loves what is familiar and it doesn't matter if it's bad or good. <laughs> it could be good for you. It could be bad for you. As long as it's familiar. Yeah, I get that, you, I guess. If you can keep that familiar thing going on and on and on, you'll keep doing it and doing it and doing it until you, you had enough of it and then you look for that change. But it's cyclical. The energy will not go away until you change. Nothing will change unless you change. It's so, up to you to make that change. Tell me about the soulsdream.com. I'm on the website and I'm here and it says, The Soul's Dream, Seven Lessons, a free online course. Is this whole thing free on this page? Everything. The whole course is free. Wow. And there's yeah, so, yeah. so much I, that, here. That's like, that's my life's work right there. Like I, I mean, everything I've learned over the last 25 years, I put into that course. So just to give you guys an example for you guys listening, if you go to the souls dream.com, it's seven information packed lessons. Uh, everything is energy is lesson one. Things like the vibrations of sound, the vibrations of light, the energy body. And then you get into uh, the medium of life, the mythology of the medium, the science of the medium, uh, the cosmology of the medium. Lesson three is like why things are the way they are. Uh, engineering of the divine matrix that goes on, laws of the universe, I am presence, putting it all together. Like, this is cool, man. You, you, somebody could probably sell this for a lot of money. And you just say, you know what? I'm going to do like, yeah. uh, oh, no, like I, I was giving a cure away, you know? Yeah, dude. People were going nuts. You no, know, like, that everyone who knows me that knows what I put into this thing, they were like, when I turn around and said, I'm giving it to free. Like, are you, are you out of your mind? Yeah, what's wrong with you, right? Yeah. You can, you can make so much money on this. This is awesome. It's so good. I'm like, I'm not, I mean, obviously, yeah, I want to make money. I, I'm, well, you I have, have to, to. This where we're at here now. But my main mission is to wake up the collective consciousness. That's why I'm here. I, I mean, I know where I, where I was in my past life and I know that I, where, what I've been doing all to get me prepared for this lifetime to help in the assistance moving from one paradigm to the next. I know what I'm here to do. Um, making money is part of it, right? But that's not my main goal. My main goal is really to help people awaken and move into their full empowerment. And so when I had this information, I've, like I said, I just felt like I had to give it away. And many people, they, even people that help me are like, you're nuts. You're absolutely nuts. Just charge a little bit do donations i'm like no it's for free everyone should have access to this information if it resonates with them good if it doesn't good my part is done <laughs> yeah, you're just trying to get together. them to tap back into their power man I, that's, that's cool I put it together i put it out there yeah. and uh so like i said I, the first the first uh four lessons are based on the information that's already out there that most people have come across before and then the last i thought it was four but the last three are my experiences uh, for my 25 years and tying everything together and, and how we can really move into understanding what we're, what we're in here and how we can use it. So your life uh, work, though, as far as um, uh, what you do for a living is the hypnotherapy and the life coaching, and that's kind of like where you really take time with somebody and dig down in for them, right? That's where you're putting right. massive amounts of energy into trying to help somebody. Which yeah. I can assume that can be pretty, yeah, I mean, I already know. Like, I haven't done this for people, but people want me to do it. Like, they want to talk to me for hours on end and all this stuff. And I'm thinking, I start thinking about people like you, like, wow, I don't know how you do all this. Like, 
you'd I would have to charge for it honestly, especially if you're helping them. But hypnotherapy uh, is a skill, man. That's a real yeah. skill. I mean, I mean, it, what it is is it's like anything. You just study and you learn how to do something, you know, and then you sell your services. Well, I feel and like I, I can I'm, trust I'm, you. I'm, I just want to say that real yeah. quick. But I don't mean yeah. to cut you off, but. For people that are, there's a lot of people out there worried about hypnotherapy. They're worried that yeah. once they open that part of themselves up to you, what yeah. is he going to crack? Like, what's he going to do, man? You know, am I going to be clucking like a chicken later? You know what people think about, right? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm No, I'm, that doesn't interest me at all. I can tell I mean, you from talking to this guy off the air, you guys, this guy is really going to help you for real. Yeah, thanks. No problem. No problem. Yeah, um, no. Nah. My, my, like I said, my mission here is really to help in the assistance of the collective consciousness waking up. That's really my mission. <laughs> Cause I understand that we we're in this together. Like we're really in this, we're, we're a soul family taking a 26,000 year journey together. We're all in it together. We're all in this collective soup, just moving out of the depths of our unconsciousness and moving into the awakening process. And we're all going to start waking up in our own time, some faster than others, and there's no rush. I mean, think about it. You take 12,000 years to forget who you are, to put yourself into the unconsciousness, and if you look at, you know, the majority of, of the human race today, they're still in a, in a state of unconsciousness, right? Unconscious to the to their higher power. But that's a beautiful thing because they, they deserve to be in that spot because it took them 12,000 years to get here. Now, some of us want to wake up really quick and be like, all right, I'm done. I'm out. I want to wake up quick. And so for those people, that information's there. And for those who want to take their time, no judgment. Take your time. I mean, I think we're still millennia away from the full awakening for the whole collective. I mean, we're, we still have so much time. So you think so? Because it oh, feels yeah. like times. I want to get back to where I can freeze time again. And I yeah. got to think that, you know, figuring out how to tap back into my childhood that where you were talking about the beginning of the show, yeah. our power, our imaginative power, right? If we can get back to that state of consciousness where we could just stare out a window for hours, where weeks were long, where yeah. years were so long, we could literally slow. I'm not saying we're going to find the fountain of youth, but we could slow our lives down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And I mean, we can do that. Well, if you look at if you look at like the 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 Bible and other ancient texts, they would talk about people who lived five hundred years old. You know, like they would live very long lives. In the golden age, we didn't die until we decided to exit this body, and we're going to get back to that. So we're going to start living longer and longer and longer now as we move into the awakening of our power. So we're we can not so much slow time in the sense of we're doing less, but we're going to be able to move around more. And yet, still hold our vigor and vitality with ourselves. That makes kinda sense. Kind of like, uh, yeah, kind of like the uh, baby Yoda, right? He's fifty years old and he's like a little kid. <laughs> Have, everybody's so, talking about that now. The, oh, you know that what is it called? The show, The Mandalorian. So obviously, you've got you've got a yeah. Disney Plus account too, right? Everybody's got this thing now. Um, that show has already passed up Stranger Things as far as uh, people watching. Well, yeah, but it's Star Wars. I mean, it's it's just it's 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 like so ingrained in all of us that you know that that whole. Uh, that How epic. does that that don't make sense though? And Stranger Things <laughs> is is like Stranger my. Things. It's, it's my awesome. it's my stuff, man. I don't see yeah. how that could pass up. By the way, uh, next week we're gonna actually have one of the cast members of Stranger Things come on the show. Nice, that's so, awesome. So yeah, I'm pretty stoked about that. Didn't think that That's was going to cool. happen, but my producer is like a miracle worker. Don't know how he's doing <laughs> what he's doing. But, um, yeah, man, it's been really cool to talk to you. I think you're doing good work. I think what you're doing is is perfect. You know, like, I don't see, we talk about the occult and magic and the paranormal and uh, the out-of-body experience and all kinds of stuff on the show. But it all comes down to some real fundamental things um, yeah. That I believe you're talking about that we can tap into if we just can understand the nature of the unconscious and the, and the consciousness we can just once we get that and once we you're understand so how powerful. polarity works we yeah, can really so just powerful. dig in yeah yeah where your attention goes energy flows so direct your attention 
to what you want to manifest in this world. This is your world. You can manifest anything. Don't be held down or tied down by what you're seeing outside. Let all that go and focus inward on what you want to experience because you have that ability. I mean, we all have the ability to change. We're not trees. I think it was Zig Ziglar would say that. You're not a tree. You're not stuck here. Zig you can Ziglar. move around. You can right. become anybody you want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was you good can do at what he did. You want. Yeah, I mean, we're not trees. Today well, does not define tomorrow. What do you think about Joe Dispenza? Have you read his latest I love, book? I love Joe. I love Joe. I love Greg Braden. Uh, yeah. Joe, Joe in his in. latest book, man, really breaks it down. Oh, dude, yeah. Scientifically to I've the only, molecular I've seen, level. Yeah. I've only seen little bits and pieces of it. Like, I've seen some interviews with him about it. I mean, I haven't read it. Um, I probably should get the audio book. I, I'm good with audio books. Yeah, me too. Slap on an audio book, you're good to go. Yeah, all um, of my books are the audio books. And, uh, you know, the first book that got me to realize that how powerful the mind was, actually, was uh, The Book of Five Rings by Mi uh, Miyoto Musashi, The Swordsman. Okay. Like, this yeah. guy killed so many people. <laughs> you know, he was like the world, he's still to this day probably the world's best uh, swordsman. And you, you open the book and you think you're going to read about, you know, techniques of how to swing a sword and all this stuff. But it wasn't that, man. Like, this guy mastered his mind. He mastered his elements mm -hmm. and can literally control a situation. It didn't matter if he was fighting one person or six, you know. Um, and that kind of woke me up to how powerful the mind is, too. And that all of yeah. these corporations, what people don't understand is, like, really big corporations – they know this stuff. They read these books. Oh, like yeah. it's their thing to control everybody's mind, you know? And it's not for like some yeah. sadistic, evil, uh, satanic reason. It's just so they win. That's what it's all yes. about. Yeah. 100%. Not so much win, but control. Mm -hmm. It's all about control. So that's why the 1% can control the 99% because the 1% control what the 99% are being fed being you know externally and, and internally <laughs> you know next so. time you come on the show we'll get into the merkaba and all the stuff you ever look into oh, that yeah. i love that yeah oh yeah i'm very familiar with dream below actually i had a um my my fir very first time ever online i got on dream below's q a and i explained my experience with him and actually if it's on the soul's dream the, the, the little um the little clip with me and dream below there and what he said about the information I'm sharing, he's like, nobody is talking about what you're talking about. He goes, this is like pretty deep free. stuff. The soul's yeah. dream, right? Or the soul's dream .com. Listen, soul's uh, dream. Yeah. Jason, thank you for coming on lighting the void. It's been a blast talking yeah. to you, man. Yeah. Thanks, man. I, I really appreciate it. It was a great time. And thank yeah. you to everybody listening. I mean, good times. <laughs> we got to do it again. We got to do it again. And yeah, if uh, anybody takes your courses, I want to hear about it. I want to know about it. The free one too, yeah. Especially, and then yeah, I'll I'll like, do a hypno. You know what? I'll probably do my first real deep dive with you, and then go and tell everybody how what went down. That sounds perfect. cool. That sounds awesome. Let's do it. Let yeah, me know when you're about. Thanks let's for not do it at three in the morning though. <laughs> no, no, no. We'll do it at a decent time. But thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. All right, guys, go check out the website. All right, jlayton dot com. That's J A Y L A Y T O N jlayton.com the souls dream.com and the masters org. tomorrow night on the program we're going to have jay widener on the program i'm stoked about this jay widener.com gaia.com forward slash widener yeah so get your questions ready for that one you know because this guy has been called by wired magazine an authority on the hermetic and alchemical traditions we'll put that to the test but that's going to be uh tomorrow night and then wednesday night we're going to have on JJ and Desiree Hertak, and uh, that's from futurescience.org, and then December the 5th, PMH, Atwater. Now, come on. Near-death studies. This is going to be a killer week here on Lighting the Void. So please, please stay tuned. Keep it locked in here on the Fringe FM. Coming up next on the Fringe FM is The Secret Teachings with Ryan Gable. Do not copy this show without written permission and the main music was by Chronox at chronoxofficial.com. The guitar was by Bundy. A big shout out to our main producer, Pacho, a.k.a. Patrick Newland. And uh, Don, my co-host, Dan Lopez, the Reverend Dan Lopez. 
as well as Eric Markham, our partner on the network, Jeremy Scott, the program director, everybody over at Ground Zero, we love you. Uh, J.D. Lewis got a new show coming out Wednesday night, and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow night, same time, same channel, right here on the, the Fringe FM. Good night. is advised.